Hare Krishna, Madhavanand Prabhu, Amarendra Prabhu, thank you very much for joining once again. This is probably among the most eagerly awaited podcasts for us. So many devotees have appreciated that it opened a new vista of appreciation of Krishna Bhakti for them, especially in terms of the particular Gopi Gita. So one devotee said that this is, I had written the book called Demystifying Reincarnation. So one devotee told me that this is demystifying the Gopi Gita. <laughs> <laughs> So, thank you very much for joining. And since this is a very devotional topic, you know, maybe we could normally just start the discussion, but we could start with some Mangala Charan. If you would like to lead us, Madhavanantru. Om Agyana Timanandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Shakshu Unmilitam Dena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Narayanam namaskritam naram shchaiva narotamam Devim sadasvachim vyasam tato jayam hudirayat Vedi ramayane shchaiva purane varate tata Adhavante cha madhye cha hari sarvatya gihate Mukam karodi vacha lambhangum langayate girim Yet Kripa Tamaham Vande Shri Gurum Dinataranam Paramananda Madhavam Guruve Guru Chandraya Radhikaya Tadalaye Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namona Maha Bancha Kalpada Dubisha Kripa Sindhu Bhyavacha Patita nam pavane bio, Vaishna babio, namona maha, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadha, Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Brinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare Hare Goranga Hare Krishna. Thank you. Beautiful. So I'll just quickly try to summarize what we discussed last time. Thank you. So I think uh, a major amount of the time we did uh, mm-hmm. invest in discussing why and how the Rasalila should be discussed. So uh, one of the major hesitations is because it's a very advanced topic which can be easily misunderstood. But then the other point we discussed was that if we are not going to discuss it, that doesn't mean the world is going to stop discussing it. And if we don't present the proper understanding from our tradition, others are going to present some understanding. And that is going to be, that is going to likely be a, likely be a misunderstanding. And so unwittingly in trying to preserve our tradition, we may end up, uh, uh, we may end up uh, handing over our tradition's esoteric aspects to those who are more likely to um, misrepresent it. Then we discuss Prabhupada's quotes also, how Prabhupada said, you cannot boycott the gopis and especially love in separation can be talked about. And also, if you look at our trad- the Bhagavatam itself, it says its purpose is to free us from the hearing the Rasdila, especially if it is done in Anushrunayad, it will free us from, from lust. So then, uh, so the idea is that we, the more we understand the real love between the gopis and Krishna, then our attraction to the replicas of that love in this world will, will decrease. And then also this particular uh, section of the 10th canto is exquisitely beautiful. In terms of the, so it's not just devotional, devotional sweetness, but also poetic sweetness, which we can glimpse. And in that case, we discussed about Amarendra Prabhu mentioned the verse that Krishna speaks, and then in response, the gopis speak. So we discussed the beauty of the characteristics of the first verse, especially. And overall, that this is topic which has to be discussed carefully. Uh, not prematurely, but at the same time, it is a part of our tradition and, and it is important for us to discuss it in, the, in that. So I think the mood for the discussion was one of the main aspects that we had in our previous session. And then we discussed the, especially the first words of the Gopi Gita and how 
the word indira can refer to radharani can krishna and uh, sorry radharani as well as lakshmi devi and various connotations of that particular verse so overall i think we have set the scene for the discussion of this topic do we want to have some more caveats or something before we move ahead or any other things you would like to add from last time's discussion can you hear me prabhu yes yes i i'm okay just okay okay so i'm just sharing the screen and maybe we can go on to the subsequent verses if you are okay with that we were going to start with the first verse i think i think first we discussed uh we are you want to discuss more of the first i'm okay with we'll just take it however it goes actually i i could tell you i i i i'm a render can can correct me but i think we could spend another four sessions on the first verse <laughs> <laughs> sure so sure, sure please go ahead so yes bro you would like to lead the discussion adan prabhu the first verse all right well first of all some of our charyas have described that in this section of the gopi geet first of all in, in uh, his uh, valabha charge in his subodhani tika he says ekon ekona vimsati vidha gopya swadhyadi karata ekon vimsati vidham stutam chakra hare priyam that there's 19 different types of gopis and so there's 19 different varieties of praise uh that's from from the valabha sampradaya but in our line we generally consider that there's each verse has two different meanings one which is presented by the dakshina gopis or the right wing gopis headed by chandravali and the other headed by the the bamya gopis the left wing gopis headed by radha Mm. and uh the first verse then uh, the, the gopis headed by chandravali basically they're saying that that because of your birth braj is most more glorious and dear lakshmi devi always resides here so our dear beloved you please show yourself and those who belong to you and whose lives depend on you they're always looking for you in all directions but, but the bamya gopis headed by radha they say that that uh uh the, because of its or, origination with the uh in braj the group that belongs to you is more eminent you know? meaning radharani's group and radharani is always abiding there and our dearly beloved the life heirs which are yours and are kept for your sake uh, those life heirs seek you in all directions and you should see this so those life heirs are the gopis themselves so there's many many different points made in this uh chapter Shridhar Swami Bhavarta Deepika, on pretty much all of our charyas, at least three or four of them, they begin with a, a, an invocation verse, which Amarendra Prabhu summarized in the last section. Shridhar Swami Bhavarta Deepika, he says, "A oh, sorry, if, you don't, if you don't mind, can you a little slow down? It's beautiful that the that the two rings of the gopis are. So maybe we could just backtrack a little bit and talk about the the moods of the two two wings also." so i think whether if i understand right chandravali's group is a little more submissive in fact right. uh, i think uh, i think vidak madhav gives the example that like say krishna is an elephant and in one sense uh, chandravali is like a she elephant chasing the he elephant when radharani is the he elephant chasing the she, ele- she elephant so it like talks about a procession of three so in that sense chandravali is more uh, and her gopis the mood is more of appreciation of krishna and almost a little bit of uh, fear that krishna may go away from me but radharani her and her uh, her group is that actually krishna fears that radharani may go away from me so it's a, so the mood is more of uh, mana like with the mana mandir we have so th- this is my understanding you'd like to maybe elaborate on the mood a little bit and then uh, maybe re- rearticulate the reading of the two verses for the verses from that perspective with the word tavaka 
is significant in the verse. Tutavaka means your, it means that, that belong to. So uh, the first, the right wing gopis, they're saying that, that uh, we belong to you and uh, in, in a submissive kind of way. Uh-huh. Asava means the, 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 the prana, the heirs, the life. So Asava Vichindate, the, the uh, left wing gopis, the Bamyanayakas, the Radharani's gopis, they're saying that uh, the, your life heirs, which are non different from you, they're searching from you in all different directions. And you should understand, you should see this, uh, you should understand this thing. It um, means that to be seen. May you see this, or, or maybe you see us, that right wing gopis are saying. I, I wonder if uh, Amarinda Prabhu has any further comments on that. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. So, when, uh, Amarindra Prabhu, you want to go ahead? Before, before that, if you want to elaborate, why Chandravali's group is called right wing and uh, the Radharani's group is called left wing? Any particular reason for that? So, Srila Rupa Goswami has said something very beautiful in this regard. He says that um, Chandravali's mood and Srila, uh, Srimati Radharani's mood can be understood with a very beautiful example. He says that Chandravali is called Grita Sneha. Grita Sneha. Madhu Sneha. Madhu Sneha. Yes. Madhu Sneha. It is the affection that they have. Sneha means affection. And uh, Chandravali's affection for Krishna is like ghee. Hmm. Grita. And um, Radharani's affection for Krishna is like honey. Now, there are many beautiful meanings that come out of this. The first meaning is, if you uh, if you see just the way it's used in in the, the the process of eating, you have a specific dish, and then ghee just adds more value to that dish or more taste to that dish, right? But ghee on its own is never accepted as a dish. But on the other hand, honey by itself is considered to be the sweetest. So we could say that if there is a there's a specific gathering of gopis who are offering service to Krishna, then the presence of Chandravali's bhav only heightens the mood. But Srimati Radharani doesn't need to be used as a booster to the, the, the augmentation of another uh, group's mood. She by herself is like honey. She completes the group by herself. She is the why, group by herself. That's, that's why in one sense Krishna, Krishna goes alone with Radharani. That is yes. okay. Yes. yes. The mm. second point that could come is with respect to ghee and um, and and honey is when you heat ghee, it melts. But on the other hand, when you heat honey, uh, it becomes solid. So what that means is when uh, Krishna. Um, the, the, the dealing of Krishna with Chandravali and Krishna with Radharani could be understood like this, that when Krishna gets a little angry or a little heavy, that's considered to be the heat of the fire, then the, the, the ghee of Chandravali's bhav melts and she becomes subservient. But on the other hand, when Krishna goes like this to Srimati Radhika, then Srimati Radharani being honey, she doesn't melt, she goes higher. <laughs> Manini Srimati Radharani. And then Krishna has to melt. This is why Srila Rupa Goswami calls Radharani as Swa Adina Bhartrika. She is that heroine, that Naika who can completely control Krishna. Chandravali cannot do man because if she tries to do man, Krishna will leave her and go to Radharani. But if Radharani does man, Krishna has no other kunj to go to. Mm. So therefore, the heat of Krishna's dealing melts the bhav of Chandravali's. Uh, ghee-like personality and then she becomes submissive and, and subservient but the honey of Radharani's mood gets thicker when the heat is given so her bhav becomes more thicker and, and, and intense also another thing could be understood that when, when we pour ghee from one, one uh, let's say a bowl to another bowl so sometimes it splits and splatters on the end while pouring but honey while it's being poured it's slow but it's always one pointed. It never splitters and splatters at the edge. So we could say that um, Chandravali is like key, enough said to be understood. She can splitter and splatter with some Vyavasaya Atmika Buddhi, Ekeha Kurunandana. But Srimati Radharani is like honey, one pointed, sweet, 
one directional, although slow, but uh, sweet and perfect. So in this way, Srila Rupa Goswami has given um, Grita Sneha, Snehika, and Madhu Snehika Bhav of uh, Chandravali and Radharani. And I just want to add one more thing, that as far as their names are concerned, the name Chandra Avali. Now in Sanskrit, the word Avali means rays, um, arrays, or rose. Yeah. Right? Like Deepa Avali. Deepa Avali. Avali means rose and Deepa means lamp. So on the day of Diwali or Deepavali, we keep rows or arrays of lamps. Therefore, it's called Deepavali. So she's called Chandravali because she's as beautiful as rows and rows and arrays and arrays of moons put together. So she's that beautiful. And what's the meaning of the word Radha? Radhyate yaya sa Radha. Radhaiv aradhyate maya. The Brahma Vaivarta Puran describes Krishna is saying, she who worships me completely at all times, in all circumstances, and she whom I worship completely at all, all times and at all circumstances is Radha. So we could say that by the names, Chandravali is the, uh, is, is the array of moons as far as beauty is concerned, and Radha is she who worships Krishna and whom Krishna worships. So just playing with the word, we can know that we can call Radharani as Chandravali. Because she's also as beautiful as millions of moons. But we can call Chandravali Radha. <laughs> because she may worship Krishna, but Krishna doesn't worship her. So therefore, um, Radha Purna Shakti, Krishna Purna Shakti Man, Dui Vastu Bheda Nahi Shastrera Praman. So Radharani is uh, the complete manifestation of Krishna's internal pleasure potency. Beautiful. So... I think many many aspects of the metaphor. I think at a basic level also, you know, ghee conveys a little bit more of opulence, and uh, honey has more of sweetness. So that it's not exactly you could say Aishwarya and Madhurya because both are in the Madhurya rasa, but to some extent there is a greater you could say awareness of Aishwarya within that Madhurya, like in Sakya. Arjuna's Sakya is slightly different from, say, Shridama or Madhumangal's their Sakya. I think Rupa Goswami refers to the Gaurav Sakya. I think Gaurav Sakya was Vishrambha Sakya. So we could say that that, that that metaphor also conveys a little bit of that difference. Isn't it? Ghi and... Uh... Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, Madhavan? My, my Guru Maharaj also commented on this, that when the Vipralamba Agni or, or the heat of separation is applied... Then what happens is that Chandravali, like Ghi, the Grita Sneha, melts. But the Madhu Sneha, as uh, Amarandir Prabhu pointed out, it becomes thicker, in particular with the heat of separation. Sometimes uh, Chandravali has some man. You can also point it. And we'll see that in this Gopi Geet. But that man is only for a brief moment, and, and she feels very bad right away, generally, and she withdraws that. Sometimes there's some kind of man there with her. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, Pru, going back, I mean, uh, is there any particular reason that one of them is considered right and left? Is left con now left is superior in some ways in this context? Any? any well, I always, I always understood, and maybe I'm around can comment on this, but that the Bamya indicated not just left but contrariness. That, that left side and, and, and Dakshin a right indicates something which is correct. Oh, that's beautiful. I, I, There's a beautiful example in the Lita Madhav when Krishna is uh, in Navarbindavan garden, and uh, it's a long, complicated thing, but Chandravali appears as Rukmini in the Lita Madhav, and Radharani appears as Satyabhama. Oh, yeah. And uh, at one point, uh, Chandravali Ra Rukmini understands that Krishna has gone with Radha and she starts to become angry and she starts to say something harsh. <laughs> and then immediately she, she feels bad. Oh, 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 I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> and Kushikrata Prabhu in his translation is, is given a nice example, I think. He says that Krishna protests. He said, for one moment, you give me some very sweet thing, and now you're giving me well water. <laughs> well so Krishna water. was appreciating the harsh words <laughs> and Chandravali, and now all of a sudden it's like well water. It's, 
it's not not, not so good. <laughs> so, yeah. mm. so I think then that also I think in the Chetan Charitamrut in the beginning he says that what is that Aishwarya Shithila Prema Nahi Ishwara Bhujai. Uh-huh. The Lord is not pleased by the love which is Shithil. Shithil is it is almost made uh, made inactive. Shithil is like important almost important inactive. So by the knowledge of Aishwarya, so you can say that that it's something similar over here. Yeah. So con- I was just thinking about this contrariness, what you said. In English, the word right also means this. The right means correct and right also means uh, the direction, right? So in that sense also the right, so the right disposition toward approaching the Lord is reverence. And that is what is ex- exhibited by uh, Chandravali. But uh, with respect to Radharani, that is contrary. That the Lord, she goes away from the Lord and the Lord runs after her in some ways, at, especially in the Mandila. Okay. So just uh, going back, so these two moods, the, the two readings you gave for the, for the Gopi, for the first verse. So uh, these do, do these two groups, moods, are they reflected in the two readings? Yes. Can you, just, with this background, can you just repeat, repeat that a little bit? So, uh, the, the first, the right-wing gopis headed by Chandravali, they're, they're glorifying Krishna in a very sweet way. And they're saying, Jayati te dikam janmana braja, that because of your birth, brajas become uh, very glorious. And Indira, uh, Lakshmi Devi, She's always residing here right, all the time. And they're saying to Krishna that uh, those persons who are tavaka, tavaka means who belong to you, right, and <laughs> they give a different understanding of the twai dritta asva twam vichinvite, that you're these, their personalities who tavaka, they belong to you, and whose lives are dependent on you, they're looking for you in all directions. But the, the Bamya gopis headed by Radha, their mood is a little different. The Dakshina gopis, they say that, oh, Krishna, we belong to you. But the Bamya gopis, they say that, Krishna, you belong to us. You belong to Radha. Mm. And so they're, they're indicating by the words, Jayati te dikam janmana braja, that, that by its origination, this uh, janmana braja in braj, that this group is more prominent. In other words, because Raj belongs to Radharani, and Radharani is always abiding here. So they're giving this meaning of uh, the word Indira. They're indicating that Indira indicates Radharani, that Radharani is always staying here in this place. And they're also giving a similar meaning, the word Tavaka, meaning yours, but this Tavaka that they that, that what belongs to you is not just the bodies like the dakshina gopis are indicating their lives but their life heirs their everything is yours mm-hmm. and those life heirs are kept for your sake and those life heirs are searching for you in all different directions and, and this is something you should see you should understand this there's a different uh, meaning vidyatam to see Shri Swami Bhavarta Deepika says that, that this chapter, the gopis, they've lost their hope. And it's very interesting. He says that they, they've, they've gone to the bank of the Jamuna, which is significant because previously the gopis are just staying with Krishna in, in the forest. But now, as we have a saying in America, they're coming out. <laughs> coming out. <laughs> Thank you. The gopis are coming out and his gopi geet they're going to just boldly start singing in a public area about Krishna. And this first verse is considered to be like a Mangala Charna of the gopis, their, their statement. The first, many, many nice things in this first verse. One thing I find really striking is that this verse openly declares, this is, this is strong evidence, Acharya say, that Krishna is actually the son of Mother Yashoda. We, we have we have the author we have the the authority of the gopi stating this the chaitite dikam jamana braja 
that Jamuna Braja, you were born in Braj. And Sukadev Goswami, uh, usually he doesn't say this, but but he's losing it now. <laughs> Sukadev Goswami is becoming so ecstatic thinking about the situation of the gopis that he slips a little bit. Usually he's keeping that very private. How, how Krishna is born in Braj, but now he openly declares through the mouths of the gopis that Janmana Braja, you're you're actually a, a bridge bossy, you're born in Braj. That's beautiful. So this is a very specific reference, like a very strong reference to the Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharya's understanding that Krishna was born in both places, not just in Mathura, but also in Vrindavan. And yeah, that's amazing. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, Hari Vangsa Purana is very clear about that. It's a whole other big subject matter. And I always found that significant that Srila Prabhupada in Krishna book does not present that Krishna is the son of Yashoda, just that Krishna was born in Mathura from Devaki. Because Krishna book is something which was meant to introduce people to Krishna, and it's a bit of a complicated thing to try to explain that he actually is the son of Yashoda in Krishna book. But in the Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada, following Rupa Goswami, Baladi Vidya Bhushan, Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, and so many different acharyas, he uh, quotes Hadivangsa Purana, which describes that Krishna actually appeared, he was born in the, from the womb of Yashoda at the same time that the Avirbhava, or the appearance of, of Vasudev Krishna, uh, made its appearance in the prison of Kangsa. That's amazing. So Prabhupada is, uh, you know, Prabhupada was asked about Krishna book. He said, this is summary study. And then Prabhupada was asked, what does summary study mean? Satsuru Maharaj asked him, Prabhupada said, summary study means I do what I want. That is a simple explanation. What he meant by that is he, he addressed the needs of the audience, what he felt the audience would need. And uh, he kept that the esoteric aspects of Krishna Lila gave them, but in the, in the Bhagavatam. Yes. So, Janmana Vraja. Now, Amarindra, you want to elaborate on something? So, or is this thing? Sure, sure, sure Prabhuji. Actually, Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur says that I am not a snake. He says, I am not a snake to have a tongue which bifurcates at the end. You see, the, the, okay. end, the tongue of a snake bifurcates at the end, which okay. means he says, I am not a snake to share one Krishna with two mothers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Says, for me, he is Yeshoda Nanda. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, if we see even in um, Canto 10, Chapter 90, Text 48, Jayati Janna Nivaso, Devaki Janma Vado. The term says Devaki Janma Vad, which means there's a Vad, there's a constant uh, uh, point of discussion on whose son is Krishna actually, whether he's Devaki's son or Yashoda's son. Okay. But uh, it's very wonderfully reconciled for us that even when we call Krishna as Devaki Nandan, you see, we have so many devotees in Iskon also who have the name Devaki Nandan, right? Devaki Nandan Das. So would we say that that refers to Krishna as the son of Devaki? That's one meaning. But it's very wonderfully reconciled that Dwe Namni Nanda Bharyaya Yashoda Devaki teacher. That Nanda Maharaj's wife, Yashoda, just like Krishna has thousands and thousands of names, Nam Namakari Bahuda Nija Sarva Shakti, thousands of names, and each of those names have unlimited strength. So, what to speak of the number of names that Krishna's mother can have? So, she has innumerable names, but the two prominent names of the wife of Nanda Maharaj is Yashoda and Devaki. <laughs> mm. So apart from Devaki in Mathura, Yashoda Rani is also called Devaki at home. Dwe Namni Nanda Bhariyaya. Nanda Bhariya, the wife of Nanda Maharaj, Dwe Namni. She has two prominent names. Yashoda, Devaki, Iti. Cha. These are the two names, Yashoda and Devaki. And this is also seen in the Venu Geet. Vrindavanam Sakhi Bhuvo Vitanoti Kirtim Yet Devaki Suta Padambuja Labdha Lakshmi. The gopis are calling Krishna. This is Canto 10, Chapter 21, Text 10, Srimad Bhagavatam, Venukit. The gopis are calling Krishna uh, as uh, Isuta. That the whole of Brindavan has the imprints of the lotus feet of Devaki Suta, the son of Devaki. So we could say there's some rasabhas there that the gopis are saying Krishna is born as the son of Devaki in Mathura and then he's imprinting Braja with his footsteps. But actually, that's not the meaning. 
Devaki is the household name for Mother Yashoda. <laughs> so Devaki Sutta or Devaki Nandana is also the name for Krishna as the son of Mother Yashoda. So uh, completely in line with uh, Sripad Madhavananda Prabhu on that. That uh, this is a very strong proof that um, Jayati te, te adhikam janmana vraja. Vrajaha tava janmana adhikam jayati. O Krishna, Vrajaha, Vrindavan, Tava Janmana, Tava or Te in Sanskrit, your Janmana, by your appearance, O Krishna, Vrajaha, Vrindavan, Adhikam Jayati, has become more glorious. So now this more can be uh, like uh, you can discuss and take multiple meanings out. What are the different meanings of Adhikam? We could say, well, Vrindavan is, has become more glorious than Vaikuntha, because in Vaikuntha, again, Vrindavana uh, as we Vaikuntha Janita Vara Madhupuri Tatra Piras Otsavat in the Upadeshamrita there is a hierarchy. So in Vaikuntha you have a four-handed form and you never take birth there. But in Vrindavan you are having a two-handed form and you appear here. So this Vrindavan by your appearance has become more glorious than Vaikuntha where you don't appear. Or we could say Vrindavan is always glorious but by your appearance Vrindavan has become more glorious than before. Because Krishna, one of the names for Krishna is Madhava. And Madhava also means the spring season. So just like after the fall, when all the leaves have fallen, the flowers have fallen, in the spring season, they all spring back again in joy. So it's almost like Vrindavan before Krishna is like fall. And when Krishna appears, it's spring season. <laughs> the hearts, the flower-like hearts of the Brajbasis have blossomed in different colors by your appearance. So by your appearance, Vrindavan has become more glorious than what Vrindavan was before. Or we could say, Bhoma Vrindavan has become more glorious than Goloka Vrindavan. Although Goloka Vrindavan and Bhoma Vrindavan are simultaneously one, there's just the same Dham, uh, Prakash, the same Dham is appearing. But in that abode, you don't do your Janmalila. But this Bhuloka Vrindavan has become more glorious than Goloka Vrindavan because you perform your Janmalila here. And knowing that you are going to come, Indira has taken complete shelter of this land. <laughs> that is Srimati Radharani. So Radha and Krishna have come together in this land of Vrindavan. Therefore, Vrindavan has become more glorious than before. Because it was always glorious, but now Radha and Krishna, the divine couple, have manifested in the eyes of everyone. So we could say that wherever Radha and Krishna come together, Kalaha Parama Shobhanam, that time is most auspicious that place becomes most auspicious. And uh, one final thing that comes to my mind is uh, our Tilak. We can see that these two lines of our Tilak, they are like Radha and Krishna. We, we say it's Vishnu's lotus feet with the Tulsi at his, the heel of his lotus feet, which is true. But um, our Ishtadev is Radha Krishna. Jivane nidhane nityam Radha Krishna gatir mama. Shila Jiva Goswami in his Yugalashtakam has stated. So actually we could say that these two lines are Radha and Krishna. And in the presence of Jatila and Kutila, they can never meet. You see, they are parallel lines. Parallel <laughs> lines means no meeting. It's very difficult. So Jatila, Kutila, Abhimanyu, they're all trying to stop the meeting of Radha and Krishna. So then they're running parallel, parallel, parallel. But then what happens? The queen of Vrindavan is Vrindavaneshwari, Vrindadevi. So that's the Tulsi leaf. So by her divine arrangement, the parallel lines ultimately meet. So therefore, we imprint our body in Braj Bhav, taking shelter of Brinda Devi, who can make even Radha and Krishna meet, what to speak of us meeting them. Definitely possible. So we want to imprint our body with this Bhav. So Brindavan, the forest of Brinda Devi, has become so glorious because by her sweet arrangement, Radha and Krishna have met in the first verse of the Gopi. Amazing. So you're saying that Radha is already there and Krishna has come or how is Krishna Radha there? Is appearing in the first line. Yeah. And then Radha as Indira is appearing in the second line. <laughs> okay. So this is a different meaning from the meaning of in the, Lakshmi has already taken shelter. That's right. uh, okay. They're okay. Beautiful. You know, going back to your earlier uh, point about uh, I accept only Yashoda Krishna. Vishwan Chikadakur says I'm not like a snake. So maybe this is a whole different subject, but since briefly, maybe you can say how, because the Bhagavatam is quite clear that Krishna did appear in, in, in 
Mathura in the prison cell of Devaki. So does he deny that or he says he appears in Vrindavan and is transported to, to Devaki's cell or how does he explain that then? Jiva Goswami explains that very nicely in Gopal Champu. He says that, well, first of all, there's two things. One is Avirbhav and the other is Janma. And although sometimes we, we use the two words kind of interchangeably, there's a subtle but distinct difference. Avirbhav means an appearance. And in the prison of Kangsa, when Vasudev Krishna appeared, it was a very startling, amazing thing, a miraculous thing. And, and it was a good thing there wasn't a birth because a, a mother to give birth to a baby with a metal crown and a Sudarshan chakra and a club would be very difficult for a woman to do. <laughs> okay. That's the, that's the Avirbha, this miraculous, mystical appearance of Vasudev Krishna. Mm. And at that time, according to Jiva Goswami, Vasudev carried Vasudev Krishna across the Jamuna River to Nandagam. And when he arrived there, uh, by the potency of, of, of Yoga Maya, everyone was asleep. Even Yashoda was asleep. She'd just given birth, but she was asleep. And according to Jiva Goswami and Acharyas, Yashoda had given birth to twins, mm. a baby boy and a baby girl. But by the potency of Yoga Maya, Vasudev couldn't see Nanda Nandan Krishna, who was laying there next to Yashoda. And he only saw, Yoga, he only saw the, the baby girl, Subhadra. So he placed Vasudev Krishna down on the bed, and that Vasudev Krishna at that time entered into the body of Nanda Nandan Krishna. And in the uh, Gorgavinda Smarna Archana Padati, Jan Chandra Goswami explains that, therefore, it was always, he gives a very nice explanation how and his two different shaktis, when uh, he would kill the demons, and Radha and Krishna would, would go somewhere else. So they, they're not part of that pastime, and then, and then again they would they would they would come back, and then they would send that that Vasudev Krishna away when they're together. So there was some privacy between Radha and Krishna. It wasn't that Vasudev Krishna is there, but Vasudev Krishna kills the demons, or at least most of the demons. Krishna personally dealt with with, with Shankachuda and with uh, Kaliya. That that's another subject matter. But most of the demons were killed, but by Vasudev Krishna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, and then also, Gopal Champu says that you yeah, continue your differentiation between Avirbhav and Janma. I had not heard about that particular thing. He also says that Yashoda was asleep because, in her case, the 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 delivery was long and exhausting, and that's why everybody at that time was asleep. So that difference between Avirbhav and Janma that can also be elaborated that way. But then, yeah, Jamma is something very sweet and innocent when a baby's born. That's so sweet. It's the epitome of sweetness. But Avir Bob, when some just bang, somebody appears in a room. <laughs> that's <laughs> sweet. <laughs> okay. It also describes in, in the Bhagavatam and Gopal Champu that uh, Krishna was transferred from the mind of yeah. Vasudev to the mind of, of Devaki. But in Gopal Champu, it says that, that uh, Krishna was transferred from the heart of Nanda Maharaj to the heart of Yashoda. And there is a, there's a difference. <laughs> oh, okay. That's amazing. So mind is, uh, is it a little bit more indicative of uh, a more of Aishwarya Bhakti? Or Jnana and Aishwarya. Yeah, okay. the, the... Jnana. We read in the Bhagavatam that when Krishna appeared and that Avirbhav, I mean, if somebody just bang appears in the room, what do you do? You fall down on the ground and you start offering prayers and wow, this is amazing. So they started offering prayers to him. But when Krishna appeared, when he was born from the womb of Yashoda, and there's proof of that because the, the, according to the Bhagavatam and the Brahma Vaivarta Purana, the umbilical cord was cut. And the Jatakarma Sangskara, which means cutting that, that umbilical cord, was performed in Nanda Bhavan, in the house of Nanda Maharaj. Now, unless that <laughs> umbilical cord was extremely long and went all the way across the Jamuna River to Mathura, <laughs> this is positive proof that Krishna is the son of Yashoda. And so when Krishna was born from the womb of Yashoda, according to Kavi Karnapur in, in uh, Nanda Vrindavan Champu, he began to cry. And the sound of that 
crying was the origin of the Onkara. <laughs> and that, that crying woke up Mother Yashoda, and she looked at, at the baby, and she was so ecstatic. The, the baby w- was, was bluish, and he's sapphire color, and there's amniotic fluid all over the baby. And when Yashoda looked at the baby, she saw her own reflection in the baby. And Mother Yashoda became frightened. She thought there was a witch <laughs> or something present. <laughs> and she started calling out to Vishnu. So there's no, there's no, uh, when, when Krishna was born from the womb of Yashoda, they didn't offer prayers. And later we hear when Krishna came and killed Kangsa, then at that time, Vasudeva and Devaki began to offer prayers. And one of the things they told Krishna and Balaram is that actually you're not our son, but you're the Supreme Personality. Got it. A contrast that with, I think it's the 46th chapter of the Uddhava comes to Braj and he tries to say the same thing to Nandini Yashoda that actually Krishna is not your son. Krishna's Bhagavan, he's God. And Nandini Yashoda just, <laughs> they, what, what kind of murka are you? What kind of idiot are you? Of course he's our son. How can you try to say this kind of thing? And they don't accept that. But Vasudeva and Devaki, they offer prayers. Actually, you're God, you're not our son. But, but Nandini Yashoda is so firmly fixed. There's a nice uh, Leela Kirtan in Braj that explains the uh, when Krishna showed his Virat Rup to Yashoda, that what had happened that day is that uh, that was uh, the, uh, I think of the birthday of Balaram. Anyway, Balaram and Rohini had gone with Nanda Maharaj to the house of Upananda, Nanda Maharaj's older brother. And Yashoda was alone with a few other gopis and, and some cowherd boys. And uh, the boys came running in, and, and they started saying that Krishna had been eating mati, eating dirt. And Mother Yashoda asked to look in his mouth, and we know what happened. He showed the Virat Rup. So it, what happened to Yashoda at that time? Mother Yashoda, when, when Krishna showed his Virat Rup to Arjun, then Arjun immediately began offering prayers and begging forgiveness. But Mother Yashoda, when she saw the Virat Rup, she became afraid but not for herself. She became afraid for Krishna. She thought, oh, there's a boot, there's a ghost, here's something. So she's, she's a, uh, a, a village lady. Those village ladies, they have their wisdom, their own understanding of things. So she knew that, that if you go to the ghost shelter, you get some gobar, some cow dung, that, that cow dung will drive the goat ghosts away. So she went and got a bucket full of cow dung and brought it back, and she started smearing it all over Krishna, all over his hair and his face and all over his entire body. And Krishna's standing there with this gobar, this cow dung smeared all over his body. And Krishna was thinking to himself, in other places, when I show my Virat Rup, they offer prayers. <laughs> but in Vrindavan, when I show my Virat Rup, they just smear cow dung all over me. So henceforth, I'll not show my Virat Rup here again. So this is the difference between the mood of Devaki and Yashoda. And Yashoda's mood is, is so much stronger. Whereas you, as you commented, Aishvarya Priti Sankuchita, that Aishvarya makes the Priti Sankuchita, it makes it shrunken. So that, that opulence, that, that knowledge of the opulence of the Lord makes it shrink. But Mother Yashoda, even sometimes the boys, they come back at the end of the day and they say, it was amazing. Krishna killed this demon. And then we were coming home. And we looked up in the sky, and there was this guy. He was riding on a bull, and he was naked, and he had he had five heads. And there was another guy with four heads riding on a swan. There was somebody else riding on an elephant. He had eyes all over his body. They were describing the demigods and how they started throwing flowers down on, on Krishna, and they were addressing him, worshiping, and saying he's Bhagavan. And when Yashoda hears that, Yashoda's response says, Really? My Gopal is Bhagavan. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> it, it doesn't weaken her love. And our Acharyas described that sometimes in Braj, just like in the village, if you buy milk, the, the, uh, the dude walla, he's bringing the milk, and they, they put straw on top of the pot to keep the milk from coming out. And so then when you buy the milk, you, when you go to boil the milk later on, sometimes there's little pieces of straw in that milk. And sometimes that straw comes to the top and you can see it. But sometimes when it's boiling, it goes down and you can't see it. So similarly in Braj, they've heard from Purnamasi, they've heard from Gargamuni that Krishna is Bhagavan. And sometimes that conception comes up just like the straw comes up. 
and other times it's not there. But even when it comes up, it enhances the intensity of their love. It doesn't weaken it as it does with Devaki and Vasudev. Sorry for speaking so long. That's beautiful. <laughs> Amazing. So much, uh, there's so much uh, nectar which you never, uh, how you, not, not heard of. It's almost like it, it's difficult to even conceive these things. It's amazing. So, but just going back to that Vishwarupa, we said that he's smeared Gober. So, when, exact, <laughs> when, when exactly is this said to have happened? In which, like, time, uh, any, any idea of the time phase or the, is it Komar Lila or Bal Lila or Yogan Lila or something like that? Komar Lila, Lila. When, when that, that pastime takes place on the bank of the Jamuna and the boys that's still there, that, that, uh, uh, you, you, what's the name of that uh, play? Raman Reti? Uh, no, no, in, in, in Gokul, on the bank of the Jamuna, where the boys, they, they were teasing Krishna about that. Amarinder, you must know the name of the place. It's in Gokul Mahavan. And, yeah. Uh, the place where uh, the, this Brahmanda Ghat. Where Brahmanda Ghat, yeah. Brahmanda Ghat, thank Brahmanda you. Ghat. So, so, so that's where Krishna showed his Brahmanda Rup. But it, it didn't uh, fill the big bosses full of awe and reverence and fear as it did with Krishna and, and with others. Oh, so you're saying normally what we hear is only Ashoda saw the universal form. And, uh, yeah. and, we, and we, don't hear, we, we don't hear what happened afterwards generally. But, but in this Braj Leela, they say that Mother Yashoda, she became afraid thinking that, that my boy has been possessed by a ghost. Or something, and so she got that go bar and smeared it all over Krishna. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Amazing. So yeah. So the this point which you mentioned that the beautiful example of straw going up and or coming down, milk. Yeah. If if you look at the Gopi Gita later, also you'll see that time and time again, although the Gopis refer to Krishna as God. They ultimately come down to, therefore, you come back, you are our lover. You are our... <laughs> so that in one sense, the Aishwarya Gyan is used to intensify the Madhurya mood. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, detract from it, but rather it adds to it. That's beautiful. Just like, a, like a, 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 an ordinary citizen in, in a country may feel awe and reverence to the king, but the king's mother, for the, king, the king's mother, he's always my boo-boo, my, my little boy. And she, she thinks of him in a very, very sweet way, even though she understands that he has this opulence. And sometimes she sees the opulence and she, she might even be somewhat impressed by it. But the presided, the pr prominent mood in that mother is a sweet mood. And that's the prominent mood you showed. And sometimes the slice body comes up, but then immediately it's defeated <laughs> by the majority, by the sweetness. Amazing. Yeah. So, Arendra mm. Prabhu, you would like to add anything? More? Actually, Sripad uh, Bilva Mangala Thakur has written a very beautiful verse in this regard. He says, Gopal Angana Kardame Viharase Vipradhvare Lajjase Bruse Goshata Hunkrite Stutishatair Maunam Vidatse Satam Dasyam Gokula Sundari Shukurushe Swamyam Nadantat Masu Nyatam Krishna Tavangri Pankaja Yugam Premaiva Labhya Param. He has given a very beautiful um, Transcendental contrast of how Krishna behaves, bracket misbehaves in Vrindavan, <laughs> in contrast to how he responds to anyone and everyone outside Vrindavan. He says, Gopal Angana Kardame Viharase Vipradhvare Lajjase. When the Brahmanas outside Vrindavan, Vipra means Brahmanas, Adhvare on the fire sacrifice, when they call, they call Sahasra Shira Shapurushaha. Sahasraksha Sahasrapat Sabumim Bishwato Mritva Atyatishta Dashangulam Purusha Evedam Sarvam Yad Bhutam Yad Chabhavyam They are chanting these prayers and awaiting and calling Krishna. But they don't see Krishna appear from that Yadnya Kunda. Why? Says Krishna Lajjase. He feels very shy to appear there. But what is he busy doing anyway? <laughs> Gopal Angana Kardame Viharase. He's busy rolling in the backyard of a cowherd man in Vrindavan. In the dust, cow dung, cow urine, and all the fresh water. 
and the dirty water of Brindavan is where he is busy rolling and they don't even call him. He goes to steal their butter. And here outside Brindavan, when the Brahmanas are calling him, Swagatam, Swagatam, Su Swagatam, Ida Mazanam, Gleam, Krishna, Ayanamaha, he doesn't come. But in Brindavan, he's busy rolling. Gopal Angana, Angana means the backyard or front yard. Gopal Angana Kardame, Kardama means mud, Vihara say, he's busy rolling. But Vipradvare Lajja say, he's shy to go to the fire sacrifice of Brahmanas outside Brindavan. Now the second contrast. Bruse Goshata Hunkrite Stuti Shatair Maunam Vidatse Satam. When the yogis are sitting in meditation for lifetimes, for lifetimes, and they are meditating, and they even realize the form of Paramatma in their heart, the Paramatma doesn't speak a word to them. They see the form after lifetimes of bhajan, of meditation, but Paramatma doesn't speak a word. But what is he busy doing in Brindavan? Bruse goshata hunkrite, all that it takes. To make Krishna speak in Brindavan is for one calf to say, mm. that's it. Now he will sit there. And Sripad Bilva Mangal Thakur says, Bruse, he speaks, go shatta, hundreds and hundreds of times. What happened? Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Is it very hot? Are the flies troubling you? Do you want to come and play with us? Is the rope on the neck too tight? Do you want to take a bath? Do you want me to sit with you in contrast to going with my friends? Just one. Mm. That's it. Bruse go shatta hunkrite for one hung. He sits there talking thousands and thousands of times. But maunam vidatse satam for those yogis who are doing bhajan for lifetimes. Maunam. Krishna doesn't speak a word outside Prindav. And then the third contrast. Dasyam Gokula Sundari Shukurushe Swamyam Nadantatmasu. Outside Brindavan, the devotees are crying, My Lord, you are my master and we are your servant. And uh, he may or may not accept, accept that proposal. But what is he doing busy in Vrindavan? Outside Vrindavan, he is not ready to become the master of his servants. But in Vrindavan, Dasyam Gokula Sundari Shukurushe. He is busy. Smaragarala Khandanam Mama Shirasi Mandanam Dehi Padapallavam Udaram Shri Radhe Dehi Padapallavam Udaram. He is busy rolling at the dust of the lotus feet of the gopis that please accept me. Please accept me. So he is ready to become the servant of his servants in Vrindavan, but not ready to become the master of his servants outside. So with these three contrasts of uh, moving in the dust or rolling in the dust in Vrindavan, of uh, talking to the calves in Vrindavan, and taking the dust of the lotus feet of the devotees in Vrindavan, Sripad Bilba Mangal Thakur said, I have understood the key to the treasure box of your heart. Nyatam Krishna Tavangri Pankaja Yugam. I have understood the way to get to your lotus feet. Premaivalabhyaparam. It is only Vraja Prem which attracts your heart and nothing else. And this is why in Chaitanya Charitamrita also, Shakale Jagate More Bhakti, Vidhi Bhakti, Vraja Bhav, Paite Nahi Shakti, Aishwarya Nanite Shava Jagata Mishrit, Aishwarya Shitila Prem Nahi Mora Preet, Chirakale Nahi Diye Prema Bhakti Dan. Prema Bhakti Vina Nahi Jagate Ravasthan, hmm? Prema Rasa Niryas Korite Aswadan, Ragmark Bhakti Loke Korite Pracharan, Apanina Koila Dharma Shikhaina Jai, Eito Shiddhanta Gita Bhagavate Gai, Apani Karimu Bhakta Bhave Angikar, Apani Karimu Bhakti Shikhamu Shabar. It has been described that the Supreme Lord was thinking that the whole world is bowing down to me, but this doesn't impress me. I want them to love me the way the Brajbasis love. And if that love attracts my heart and they don't have it, I think it's time for me to come down and give it myself. And this is the, the beginning story of Gauralila or Gaurukatha in, in Chaitanya Charitamra. So I think Brindavan and Braja Prem um, is the key to success to Krishna's heart. Beautiful. What are the three things you said? You know, it's amazing. The secret so, of dust of lotus. So, yeah. So the first thing is that he is not ready to go to the fire sacrifice of Brahmanas outside Vrindavan because he is busy rolling in the dust in the backyard of the Gopas. Okay. <laughs> okay. And the second is he is not ready to talk to the yogis who are performing silent meditation. He will give them darshan. Yam shama sundaram achintya guna swarupam. 
ಸಂತ ಸದಯು ಹೃದಯೇಶು ವಿ ಲೋಕಯಂತಿ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಸಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಬಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬೃಂದಾವನ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾಬ್ಸ್ ಹಾವ್ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಲವ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಸಿ ಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದೆಮ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಬೃಂದಾವನ್ ದ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಬೆಗಿಂಗ್ ದ ಲಾಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಅವರ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಮೇ ಆರ್ ಮೇ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಸಾಂದ್ರಾನಂದ ವಿಶೇಷಾತ್ಮ ಅಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಕರ್ಷಣಿ ಚ ಸಾ ದಟ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಸೂದೂರ್ ಲಭ ವೆರಿ ರೇರ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ಬೃಂದಾವನ್ Uh, he is busy taking the dust of the lotus feet of shrimati radharani on his head mm. Mm. amazing yeah. there is a thinking that there is that word shantakaram bhujak shayanam there are also dhyana avasthi tadgatena i think that come the yogis are uh, in dhyana but the shantakara is relevant you know, krishna does not respond he is peaceful but he's peaceful can also mean quiet then krishna does not respond to the gopas amazing yeah Madhavendra yeah please go yeah i i i really appreciate amarendra prabhu's comment about mahaprabhu and that can also introduce another aspect of this first verse that this chapter this chapter this is the glorious kirtan of the gopis as shridhar swami was mentioning that the gopis they came they came out of the forest they came out they came to the bank of the jamuna and they started singing this gopi geet and this particular kirtan of the gopis is characterized by a particular quality their tears and they were crying and crying and this is the kirtan of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and because the quality the mood of the gopis in this kirtan this is the mood of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and his followers and this is one reason for for godi vaishnava is why this chapter is so important this teaches us the mood of, of sankirtan and how we should be crying in separation from the lord from krishna from the gopis and it teaches us ultimately that by this crying out in this way then krishna won't fail to manifest in, in the 47th chapter the brahma gita of the 10th canto there's a famous verse vande nanda bhaja strinam pada renu abikshanasa huh? uh udava speaks this after he's heard everything from the gopis <laughs> and he says that, that i i offer my pranams to, to nanda maharaj's village and these ladies and i just want to have the dust of their lotus feet and then in the second line he says yasam hari katod gitam that he speaks about the the kirtan of the gopis mm-hmm. which is udgitam which is very very loud chanting punati bhuvana trayam that this kirtan of the gopis punati bhuvana trayam punati means that that is purifying bhuvana trayam all the three worlds so this indicates indirectly the the kirtan of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu because mahaprabhu's kirtan is in the mood of the gopis and radharani so that's another reason why this gopi geet is very important for devotees to study if we want to understand about chaitanya mahaprabhu if we want to understand the kirtan of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu we should study this gopi geet <clears throat> may sing so you know again uh, this that punati tam jagatrayam that this is also you know the end of the gopi geeta not the bhagavatam is nama sankirtanam yasya sarva papa pranashanam that all sins are destroyed and the end of the gopi geeta is also at one level at the kama is destroyed from the heart so in that is also similarity between nama sankirtan and the gopi geeta and that also like i mentioned last time that how i there is so like prabhupad's translating the gopi geeta as simply hari krishna maha mantra that is <laughs> that can seem like a it it can seem like a over simplification but there, you can also see that there's so much profundity in what what prabhupad has done over there oh, it's amazing amarendra you wanted to say something yeah. yeah i was actually remembering shri krishnadas kaviraj goswami's words Uh, about uh, the glories of braj prem uh, and and how uh, it controls krishna kaviraj goswami says mora putra mora sakha mora pranapati ei bhave je more kare shuddha bhakti apana ke bada mane ama sham hin ei bhave ami hoy tahar adhin that krishna has said that what controls me what what has what controls the heart of krishna that he has spoken himself in the chaitanya charitamrita krishna says mora putra if someone worships me as 
the mother or the father. That Mora Putra, Krishna is my child. Mora Putra, Mora Sakha. Or if someone worships me as a friend. Or like the gopis in the Gopi Geet, Mora Pranapati. They use the word Daita here. And that uh, actually uh, uh, reminded me of this verse. They use the word Daita as one of the invocation, uh, as one of the Sambodhan to address Krishna in the first verse. And the word Daita could have multiple meanings. One meaning of the word Daita is he who is very merciful, like Daya, mm. right? Another meaning of the word Daita is Data Atmanamiti, that person to whom we have given our life. Or that person who has placed his life in us. So you see the two camps of Chandravali's camp and Radharani's camp speaking this. So Chandravali's <laughs> camp is saying, Krishna, you are so merciful. Daita meaning he who is the ocean of mercy. So please shower your mercy and appear before us. But Radharani's camp saying, Daita means Radhe Jaya Jaya Madhava Daite, right? Meaning he in whom we have placed our life. And he who has placed his life in us, Daita, the mutual Daita and Daita, Daita for the male and Daita for the female. So the same thing has been mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the words of Kaviraj Goswami. Krishna is saying, Mora Putra, if someone worships me um, in, in parental mood, in Vatsalya Ras or Vatsalya Prem, Mora Putra, Mora Sakha, or in Sakya Prem, that Krishna is actually my friend. Or more of Pranapati, like the gopis in the Gopi Geet, that Krishna is my uh, Lord and Master. Or in a conjugal mood, Krishna is Radha Raman. He is the Daita. Ei bhave jai more kare shuddha bhakti. Krishna says, Sakhiras, Vatsaliras, and Madhuriras. These three rasas, these Rati, Krishna mentions, and he says, in this mood, in the, one of these three moods, if someone worships me, and apana ke bado mane ama shama heen, either they consider me to be equal to them, like the friends do, or consider me to be lower than them, like Mother Yashoda does. Then I become completely subordinate, completely. Krishna doesn't say so servants, because servants always consider Krishna to be superior. But Krishna mm -hmm. says those who consider me to be equal to them, or those who consider me to be inferior to them, only they can control me. Apanake badomane, they consider themselves to be great, and ama shama heen, and consider me to be either equal to them or inferior. Ei bhave ami hoy tahar adheen. I can become adheen or subordinate to them only in these moods. So we can see that uh, this mood of the gopis is what controls Krishna completely. That they have this mamata, they have this possessiveness that Krishna is mine. Or again, two terms, madhya bhav and tvadhya bhav. Yes. Tadhya and madhya. Yeah. Like I am yours or you are mine. Either of these moods, it's fine because it, it shows possessiveness in the Madhurya Prem, in the conjugal mood. Krishna says that completely controls me. So so just to clarify, you're not saying that like Madhyatva is the mood of Chandravali's gopis and Tadhyatva is uh, the mood of Radharani's gopis. Rather, Madhyatva and Tadhyatva are both like inter, uh, interconnected, Daita, so Daita is a lover, like your lover or Lord or merciful Lord, that is the, the right-wing gopi's mood, like Chandravali's mood. And both Madhyatva and Tadhyatva are included in the mood of, uh, of Radharani, Radharani and her gopis. Is that what you are saying? Or Madhyatva is for Chandravali and Tadhyatva is for uh, Radharani's group? Yeah, Chandravali's mood is that we all belong to you. <laughs> Radharani's mood is you, you belong, belong to us and very specifically to me. <laughs> so therefore we see even in our prayer, we say, Hey Krishna Karuna Sindho, Dina Bandho Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namustate. So it's almost like increasing in the explosion of the description of Krishna. So first we say, Hey Krishna, oh, mm. oh all attractive Lord. Hey Krishna. Then he's saying, Who? Karuna Sindho, O oh, ocean of mercy, again with respect to me, I am fallen, so you please uplift me. I am in the ocean of this world, Bhava Sagara, and you are Karuna Sagara, you are the ocean of mercy, so you please have mercy on me. I am in the ocean, and you are also in the ocean, the ocean of compassion, and I am in the ocean of passion, we could say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Karuna Sindho, and then Krishna says, so what would you want me to do? Dina Bandho, 
You are the friend of the poor. Acha. Why are you asking me then? Why not go to someone else? Jagat pate, jagabandhu he goshai, tuma charana binu ara gati nai. This has been quoted in Odia. Uh, that my lord, I I am a resident of this world and you are Jagannath, the lord of this world. So it so happens, I think I have to submit my application to you alone and no one else. So, dina bandhu jagat pate. But then, that's all description of Krishna with respect to this world. Then Gopesha, the lord of the Gopas. Gopika Kanta, the lord of the Gopis. Gopinam Kanta, he's the lord of the Gopis. But very specifically, Radha Kanta. And then there's nothing else after that. No most today, he just to bow down to that, that form of the lord. So, uh, these are some thoughts. Beautiful. This mood of, you know, I belong to Krishna and Krishna belong to us. This seems to be consistent for devotees in general because it is there in the Bhagavad Gita also. Samoham Sarvabhuteshu. Uh, or the last line of that. Samoham Sarvabhuteshu. Namedveshyo Sinapriya. Ye bhajanti tumam bhaktya. Maite te shuchapyaham. So, maite can mean I belong to them. But also, I think Chakravarti Padik said that I exist in them. And they, te, te, maite te shuchapyaham. They exist in me. And then, even in the Ambarish Maharaj pastime, I think Lord Vishnu says, Sadhavam rudayam manyam. Sadhunam rudayam tadaham. That. I, the sadhus exist in my heart and I exist in the sadhus' hearts. But with respect to the gopis, the intimacy and the intensity is far greater. Isn't it? Mm. Yes, true. So, Madhavantru, I would like, if you have something to comment on this, or I, I would like to go back to an earlier point which you had mentioned. Um, okay. So you mentioned that, uh, that the gopis coming to the banks of the Jamuna and then speaking. So in one sense, it's like a public place that whereas the devotion was private. So that theme that uh, in one sense, because of the agony of separation, in one sense, they don't care whether the world comes to know or not about um, whether, uh, you know, that our relationship with Krishna, I think that mood also comes at the end. Evam bruvana virahatura brusham. Vajastriya Krishna Vishikta Manasaha Visrujya Lajjam Rudu Susvaram Sama Susvaram Govinda Damodara Madhaveti So that is I think 10, 39, 31 which, which actually is said to be that Govinda Damodara Madhaveti is the seed from which the Govinda Damodara Sotra Bilvamangal Thakur has come up. So there also they say that when Krishna is seeing Krishna is about to depart from Rindavan the gopis Visrujya Lajja so lajja can lajja can mean shame or lajja can also mean modesty the modesty of concealing their relationship with krishna they say if life is itself not going to be there that if krishna is not going to be there what is the point of living what is the point of modesty what is the point of reputation nothing matters so we just leave everything and we come to we we call out to krishna you cannot you cannot leave us and go away so it seems that that mood which they which they actually manifest in public in front of everyone in Rindavan that the seed of that mood is there in the Gopi Geet also when they, they come together collectively and they, they start singing the Gopi Geet. Yeah. So, so you want to add anything on this or any other points? Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate that very much. Um, we could summarize your comments so that there's two aspects of Gopi Kirtan private and public. And we see the same thing in, in Gora Kirtan. There's two aspects, private and public. And many times we don't, we were mentioning this in our last session, many times we don't uh, give credit or we don't pay attention to the private aspect. But Gora Kirtan began behind closed doors. In Sri Vasang, it was private and no one was allowed inside. And Gora Kirtan finished behind closed doors in the Gambira. So, that kirtan of Garanga Mahaprabhu in Puri, which is Vipalamba Ketra, which is a place of separation, it becomes more and more intense at the time of Rathiyatra. And as you mentioned, it, in that separation, the gopis, they forget about everything. Just as when Akrura was taking Krishna away from Vrindavan, the gopis previously, they, they, they didn't express their, their feelings for Krishna. And as we mentioned in our last session, the very word gopi, comes from the same beach, Datu, Gupta, to hide. 
means someone who hides their feelings. But when Akura was taking Krishna away from Vrindavan, the gopis, they came out. They said, no, we, we have to stop this. And they, they openly expressed their feelings because of that separation. So suddenly in the Gopi Geet, Sridhar Swami and Bhavartha Deepika is saying that the gopis, they came out, they came to a private, to a public place, and they began doing that kirtan. Just like in, in Gora Lila, Mahaprabhu is doing kirtan privately in Shiva Sangam, and then later, later in the Gambira. But at, at certain points when things become very, very intense, he just forgets about everything, and he comes out to Rathiatra. So just as the gopis have two aspects of their kirtan, private and public, so also does Garanga Mahaprabhu. And so also do we as sadhaks. We have sometimes devotees, they don't understand the nature of our bhajan, and they think that, that our preaching, bhajan means preaching. And I, I've even seen devotees practically going out in the street and, and announcing to people, outside people, you know, I chant 64 rounds a day, and they start telling them about their, their personal bhajan. And they have this idea that this is how I preach, by sharing what I'm doing with others. But that's not what we learned from the gopis. That's not what we learned from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There's certain things which we need to keep private. And there's certain things which we speak about in the public. Prabhupada said that in, here in Jagannath Puri, in public, Mahaprabhu was doing kirtan. Mahaprabhu was speaking about Bhagavad Gita and philosophy. But in... in, in, in uh, when he met with very high-class people, and he gives a few examples, like Sarva Boma Bhattacharya, Roy Ramananda, then he would speak something more intimate, something deeper. So it's a very important principle. And, and I, I think it's very uh, important when we look in the Gopi Gita that we should see these different aspects and not just go to the deep end of the swimming pool and, and just see the Gopi Bhav, but also how there's indications of, of Gora Lila. And even by the Gopi saying, Jayati te dikam janmana braja, Jayati means to be glorious or victorious, just like we, we call out Gurudev ki jai, or, or Tulsi Maharani ki jai ho. We express our hope that Gurudev and Tulsi Devi, they're going to have victory. But that victory of one party it implies the defeat of the opposing party. So someone who is, uh, the, we're the devotees, the Sadiq devotees, we're often in battle with, with Krishna, with Gurudev, with the instructions that they give. On one hand, we're trying to do that, but on the other hand, there's this internal struggle. So by saying, Jayati te dikam, Janmana Braja, that may you take birth in Braja, may you take birth in my heart, uh, Gurudev ki jai can mean that, Gurudev, you please conquer my rebellious heart. Please make me that I have no choice but to follow you. In the song, Gurudev Kripa Bindu Diya, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, three times he uses the word koro. He says, Kripa Bindu Diya koro e dasi. Trinapik koro means you make, you do this thing. So Gurudev Kripa Bindu, you give me a drop of your mercy. And koro e dasi, you make me into your servant. Don't accept me. He's not saying, please accept me. He says, make me into your servant. And then the next sign, he says, Sakala Sahani Baladiya Koro Nijamani Spriha. You make me the, the, the Nijamani Spriha, that I don't desire anything for myself. And then again, later on, he says, Shakti Bunihin Amiyati Dina. I'm very, I have no potency. I'm very fond. Koro Mori Atmasat. You please make me Atmasat. You make me very, very dear to you, very close to you. So we can also see this in, in Gopi Geet. There, there's Krishna and the Bhagavatam, Prati Shloki, Prati Akshin, and at the Koi, each and every verse, each and every syllable has so many different meanings for different persons. And we should also be looking for what is relevant for us in terms of Gora Lila and in terms of, of our relationship with Gurudev. <laughs> Amazing. So at one level, we appreciate the exalted, but we also look at what is our adhikar and take take what is suitable for us. That's it. Yeah, I, I sung that Gurudev so many times, but Kora, it's almost like these are Herculean tasks. We may say that, you know, I, that I am your servant, we may sign in our emails and other things, but to actually cultivate that mood, we need the mercy, the empowerment of the spiritual master. It's amazing. So, 
you know, the, in one sense, the private kirtan in Gora in Gorlila becomes public because of a because of a threat, because of the the Kazi's people destroying uh, the Murdanga at one time. So it does seem also that uh, to some extent, the Prabhupada also wrote the Krishna book in advance because he felt that you know if I am not there to complete like Krishna Swami also. Gives a summary of the Chaitan Chaitan Lila at the start of the Madhya Lila, in case I cannot complete it. So similarly, in one sense, our speaking the Gopi Gita, you know, it's a very exalted topic, but it also is that there are so many misunderstandings of it. So it's that we want to make sure that the misunderstandings don't get propagated and that the right understanding, at least to according to whatever little understanding we have get shared so it's our humble attempt to try to do that so in one sense there is this like this, this privacy there is the private and the public and they both uh, go together we don't publicize the private but then that doesn't mean that the private is to, that the public is to be deprived from that in an appropriate form the chaitanya mahaprabhu does sankirtan everywhere but then the 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 ashtakalya leela where he uh, when he demonstrates his divinity, that he doesn't do normally to everyone. He doesn't invite people to talk about his personal interactions with everyone and give special benedictions to them. That, so there is the appropriate aspect of the Leela that is presented to appropriate audiences. So that applies not only in how we share, but also you can say in how we receive, which part of the Leela we take for our, our understanding and our nourishment, our growth. In the uh, Archayami Vahadaye verse, famous verse in the 11th canto, wh wh which describes about the nature of the Kinshita Adhikari, Madhvacharya gives a very brilliant uh, uh, commentary on that. And he says that the Madhyam Adhikari, he gives respect to other people because this is a fault of the Kanishta, right? Natad Bhakti Su mm. He doesn't doesn't give respect to other devotees, doesn't give respect to other people. The Madhyam does that. But the Madhyam does it because it's it's an intellectual adjustment. He knows I'm supposed to do this. I, I know God is in everybody's heart. I haven't realized that, but I'm doing it mechanically. So in a similar way, we could say too that if we if we want to drive a car, you could drive a car theoretically from India to Russia. Hmm. But how are you going to get there unless you have an understanding what your destination is and, and what how, how are you going to go there? So we should have some understanding. We should read Krishna book. It's bona fide, including the five chapters on the Ras Lila. If we don't read Krishna book, then what? how are we going to understand what is our goal? And that understanding, like as Madhva says in, in this explanation of the Archami Vahadiye verse, it may be mechanical. That we're just, but at least there's something there, and, and we're behaving in a proper way. <clears throat> yes, well, thank you. Amarinder, would you like to add something or take sure, it forward sure. in your face? Yeah, actually, Srila Narottam Das Thakur and Prem Bhakti Chandrika, he says, Apanaro Bhajanero Katha na Koho Jatatatha. He has said that one should not speak about one's bhajan in, in public just in, in line with what Sri Padmadvananda Prabhu said. He says, Apanaro bhajanero katha na kaho jatha tatha. Don't put it out in public. And the same the same mood, uh, is there anything that's uh, fragrant, if it's kept in private, then it, it, it makes the whole thing aromatic. The whole, the whole closet is fragrant. But if it's kept out in public, then there's sublimation. So on the pretext of preaching, there are some things which are to be kept as guhya makhyati prichati as priti lakshanam, as a sign of affection between devotees. Um, we see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu keeping uh, that relationship with Swarup Damodaran and Ramananda Rai at the Gambhira. But he was in a emana uh, dayala prabhu nahi tribhuvane krishna prema hoye jar dur darashane. He was in a mood of giving Krishna prem just by his glance in public. But in the Gambira, he's trying to you know, tear his chest and you know, try to hit the wall and bleed and rub his cheek to find Krishna. So he who is giving affection for Krishna in public, in private, he's crying. Where is my Krishna? When can I see him? 
So with respect to the gopis in this context, um, there's a very nice example that uh, I feel inspired at this point is that of a candle flame. So mm -hmm. if you have a candle flame and we keep the door or let's say the window open and it's next to the candle flame, uh, the candle flame is next to the, the open window, then it's no time that the, in, in, in no time the breeze will come in and blow off the candle flame, right? On the other hand, if the flame is bright with a nice uh, teardrop-like shape, well protected by the, the window down, it's, it's not open, then what happens is you can see through the glass window that the flame is well lit, but at the same time, it's not open for the breeze to come and blow it off. So what I'm saying is, Devotion in the heart of a devotee is like a candle flame. And the mouth is the window. So when it's open, then the breeze of pride will come and blow off the flame, the candle flame of one's devotion. On the other hand, when the mouth is kept closed, which means the window pane is well shut, the window glass window is well shut, which means the mouth is shut. We are not speaking about our practices and internal realizations to everyone and anyone and everyone, then what happens is that that inner devotional lamp gets brighter and brighter because there's no breeze of pride coming through the window pane of the open mouth. And then that light can be seen through the eyes of the Premi Bhakta. The eyes of a Premi Bhakta is lit up with devotion because the inner flame of devotion is well lit. So what's happening with the gopis is throughout the, the, uh, the tenth canto, up to this point of the gopi Geet, they have kept the candle flame of their devotion well protected with their mouth sealed, not speaking about Krishna to anyone. But however, that candle flame has now become a forest fire inside. <laughs> so what's happening is even if the mouth is open, if there's no question of breeze, of pride for them. So even if the mouth is open, now they, they try to close it with the candle flame throughout. But now it's become a forest fire uh, of separation. So automatically the mouth is open, not for the breeze to come in, but for the Krishna Prem ecstatic fire flame to go out in the form of their kirtan. Mm. So uh, the inner cultivation is... So basically we could say the external, the external expression is an aspect of internal explosion. You could put it like that. The external expression is an aspect of internal explosion. There's an internal explosion of their bhav. It's almost like a pressure cooker. When we cook uh, rice in an open pot, it takes a long, long time. Long, long time. And it's not that hot. But when you cook rice in the pressure cooker, then it's the pressure is building inside. And then at one point, the, the pressure cooker can't handle it anymore. So there's the whistle that comes up and then you know after a few whistles that okay now the rice is cooked so it's almost like the gopis are keeping their bhav in the pressure cooker of privacy and then these five chapters of the rasa Leela or the five songs of the 10th canto are the five whistles <laughs> of the pressure cooker of gopi bhav to know that the rice of their mood is uh, completely perfect and very tasty for krishna to taste so these are some thoughts hmm. Amazing. <laughs> so, in, in one sense, uh, Prabhupada also made external expression as a part of our sadhana. Just to take a slightly different tack. It, but he also was cautious that you know, we don't just get caught only in external expression without any internal experience or internal relishing. So, to some extent, in our tradition or in our moment, we may overemphasize external expression at the cost of any internal experience at all. So, but we need that internal experience and the best, like they said, the best preacher is a happy devotee. You know, it's not so much what kind of classes we give, uh, but if it's just there's happiness in the heart and that happiness expresses itself, then naturally that will attract others. So internal explosion and external expression, nice way of putting it. Mm. As always, also, my mind goes to this phrase that preaching is the belching of one's bhajan. <laughs> <laughs> preaching is the belching of one's bhajan. So when we have had a satisfactory, tasty meal, prasadam, then uh, 
the, the belching will speak about it. So preaching is the belching of uh, one's bhajan. So what we are tasting through seva, Vaishnav seva, Guru seva, Nam bhajan, Vigraha seva, complete submission to our superiors and chanting the holy name and tasting Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, that is our internal bhajan. And then what we taste as Janma Sarthaka Kari through the belching of preaching will be uh, Karapara Upakar. So in that way, um, His Grace Vaisheshika Prabhu puts it very beautifully as distributing the overflow. He says distributing the overflow. He says if you pour water on a, on a cup, it goes on filling up to the brim. And then when you fill it further, then there's an overflow. So he says our heart is like that. You fill it up with bhajan, with chanting, hearing, reading, serving the Vaishnava, serving under Guru Jan. And then so much ecstasy, so much happiness that automatically what overflows is the preaching. It must come through the mouth. So the gopis have cultivated the internal bhajan in like-minded sajatiya sadhu sangha in the dham in separation from Krishna and now in the form of preaching, it's coming out in all ways, not just through the mouth, but through the eyes even. They're preaching even through tears. The emotions are so much that it's coming through the mouth. The heart is exploding. It's coming in the form of perspiration drops. It's coming in the form of hair standing on end and tears rolling from their eyes. And Krishna had to repay this back to the gopis. So there must be a Gaur Leela after Krishna Leela. Krishna Leela can be just, com it's complete, but there must be something more complete than that because there must be a payback time. <laughs> because he says, yeah, yeah, mam prapadyante. So if the gopis have cried for him, then there must be a time when he's crying for them. And Kaviraj Goswami says, Kanchana Sadrisha Deha Aruna Vasan Pulaka Ashru Kampa Sveda Tahate Bhushan. That when Mahaprabhu was dancing in front of Jagannath, how beautiful he looked. Kanchana Sadrisha Deha, golden form. Aruna Vasan with saffron cloth. And what were his ornaments? Pulaka, hair standing on end. Pulaka Ashru. Five streams of tears from his eyes, almost bringing in uh, impressions like permanent lines on his cheek. Uh, Pulaka Ashru Kampa, horopulation. And Sweda, uh, there, there was like a, a necklace of uh, pearl beads in the form of perspiration. So there must be a payback time. So this is this is the completion. Gaura Leela is, uh, is the completion of Braja Leela. So Gopi Geet is part one. But Gauralila is Krishna's response or reciprocation could be a better word. Again, please forgive me for over blabbering on this point. So payback, you're saying it's almost the Lord. Yeah, sure giving it, the Lord is giving it back. So what the devotees are offering, the Lord is giving it back. That's what you're I saying. I would say he's trying to give it back, but he's yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, Kaviraj Goswami says, Pratigya bhanga hoila gopira bhajane. That Krishna did pratigya in the Bhagavad Gita. That ye yatham am prapadhyante tam stataiva bhajam yaha. Anyone who approaches me, I will reciprocate qualitatively and quantitatively. But when the gopis cried, Kaviraj Goswami says, pratigya bhanga hoila gopira bhajane. By the bhajan of the gopis, his own promise was broken to pieces. Napari yeham niravadhya samyujam swasadhu krityam vibudha yusha viva. Yama bhajan durjara geha shrinkalam sam vrichayatat pratiyatu sadhuna. That my, my dear gopis, even in the lifetime of Brahma, I cannot repay you. Amazing. So you are saying the gopis, Krishna is paying back to, well, as Lord Chaitanya is paying back to the gopis or is paying back to the world? Or whatever is expressing, it's just coming out and the world is incidentally benefiting by it. Mm -hmm. You are asking me, Prabhuji? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I so see. basically, the the idea would be, let's say, um, let's say I take, you know, I'm not going to take, but just as an example, let's say I take uh, one million dollars from someone, and I tell that person that I will repay. You know, I, I will definitely give it back. But then there comes a point when I realize that I'm not going to do it I, because I can't do it. Even if I try, I will not be able to do it. So what will I do? I will try to hide my face. Every time that person comes, I will, I will try not to see him because it's embarrassing. Okay. It's going to be once, twice, thrice. And it gets even more embarrassing when I face him and he doesn't talk about that money. It's, it's, it's more painful to the heart. So what's happening is Krishna has taken more than $1 million from every Brajbasi in the form of love. And he says, I will reciprocate. But every time he looks into the eye of a Brajbasi, he realizes I can't reciprocate. 
So there comes a point when he tries to hide, 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 hide from everyone and Yoga Maya puts a curtain and takes him out to Mathura that you can't take it anymore in Vrindavan. You have, uh, you have taken so much debt okay. from everyone. There's so much loan. You can't reciprocate. But then what does he do? He tries to go to that owner, that person who, who has given him mercifully that $1 million and says that, you know, I can, I, I can never repay you. I'm, I'm really sorry. And the owner says, no problem. I'm not even considering a repay. That's fine. And the person feels, if you just forgive me, guess what? If you just forgive me, I will go around and tell everyone how great you are. And not just that, I will personally work in your house as a complete maidservant. And not just that, I will also bring my family and friends to serve you. He said, yeah, no problem. So that's the position of Krishna. He has taken so much affection and love from Srimati Radharani that he comes and falls at her feet, that I can never repay you. And Radharani says, oh, that's fine, no problem. Krishna says, if you can forgive me, I will walk around this world telling everyone how glorious you are. And not just that, I will bring more maidservants at your lotus feet. And Radharani agrees. And Krishna comes in this world as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, only to speak to this world the glory of Srimati Radharani. Yadi Gaurangana hoito, tabeki hoito, kemane dhare tamde, radhara mahima, he comes in this world for these two purposes. To go and tell everyone how great Radha's love is and also to give love to everyone and recruit them in the service of Srimati Radharani's lotus feet. Yatha yatha gaura padara binde binde tathaktim krita punya rashi. So it's a payback time where Krishna is trying to pay the world and also collect servants from this world to pay back to Srimati Radharani. So it's both. Yes. I'm not sure if I, I could even explain the example properly. No, no, it's wonderful. The point is that he, he's, he's always in debt. <laughs> Krishna is always in debt. Alandro, would like to begin? Yeah, in, in the last line, the, the, in the Pariyay Ham verse, Krishna says, Yapratiyatu Sadhana. And in, by this, he's indirectly indicating Gaur Lila. That my dear gopis, I can't repay you, but let your own activities be your glory. It, it, when you have a debt, if I borrow a uh, uh, million dollars from the wealthy Amarendra Prabhu, and then I, I, I get back to him and say, well, I don't have them, but I have a million rupees. I'll give you a million rupees. <laughs> he, he, he may not accept it. No, it has to be in the like currency. It has to be in the same currency. So this is a debt of love. And the, the, it has to be paid back with love. And so he has to experience the same thing the gopis experience. Sriman Rasa Rasadam Bivam Sivata Tata Siddha Karsham Venusanara Gopya Gopi Nata Sri Yeshana. So Gora Lila begins at Vamsivat. It begins when Krishna's blowing his flute and calling the gopis. And then the gopis, they leave everything. They run in the dead of night to Krishna. So for Krishna and Mahaprabhu to repay that debt, he also has to leave. He has to leave his mother. He has to leave his wife. And he has to adopt the mood of Radha. And he comes to Jagannath Puri. I was also appreciating his point about, uh, what was, I like the phrase he used so much, preaching is a belching of one's bhajan. What a beautiful expression. Uh, in the Rupa Goswami, in the beginning of his Lagu Bhagavatamrita, he gives a very important verse, which probably both of you know, Sri Chaitanya Mukodgirna, Hare Krishna Ti Varnaka Majayanti Jagat Prani Vijayanti Chadavaya, all Vijayanti Chadavaya, all glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is giving this Hare Krishna mantra all over the universe. But how is he doing it? Sri Chaitanya Mukodgirna. Mukodgirna means that it's, he's vomiting. It's exploding. It's a, in the words of Srila B.R. Sridhar Maharaj, it's a golden volcano of, of, of divine love. It, it's an explosion. My Guru Maharaj said that this, this word Udgirna means something coming up, or, or, or as Amarendra Prabhu just said, preaching is a belching of one's bhajan. And he gave another word to Udgar. Udgara in Bengali means to vomit. And my Guru Maharaj said that our preaching is vomiting. I find when I speak this in class, little boys love this because they, they love <laughs> to talk about vomiting. <laughs> and when do you vomit? You vomit when your stomach is full. And then when you vomit, by the smell of, of that vomit, you can tell what the person's been eating. 
if they've been eating nice Krishna Kata, or they've been eating <laughs> nasty things, that's our bhajan, as he nicely cited uh, our dear friend Vaisheshika Prabhu, that, that when we fill that cup up completely and then what starts overflowing, that's our preaching. And this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and this is Gopi Geet. The gopis are exploding, as Amaraka Prabhu was saying, and that, that explosion, the echo of that explosion is continuing in Gora Leela. And we're learning from the gopis how to do that kirtan. So at one level, there is so much you could say, there's so much to relish at a very like, intimate or like, transcendental level, but at, there's so much to, we could also apply at our practical level also from this Gopi Geet. Yeah. Well, so I look forward, we'll probably have to have 19 sessions for the 19 verses. <laughs> I was speaking with Amarandir Prabhu the other day about it, and we were both saying that there's so many things. I actually, I, I wanted to share a little something if we can yes, about please, the words Indira Sasvad Atrahi. Those are also very significant. And, and there's so many different meanings to this, but one meaning of Indira Sasvad Atrahi is that Lakshmi Devi, she's always residing here in Braj. But you can say that, but we don't see Lakshmi Devi everywhere. But there is a Lakshmi Devi that we see. Can I share my screen? Is that possible? Yeah. Please, please. Yeah. So there's this deity. This is Lakshmi Devi in Braj. But she's not in Vrindavan. She's in Bilbavan. She's on the other side of the river. <laughs> and she's a very unusual deity. Usually the uh, you see deities, they have some... Uh, they're giving some uh, benediction. They have some ashivad uh, hand like this. But here, Lakshmi Devi, she's got her hands folded. And she's sitting like in yoga asan, like someone doing austerities. So the story of this deity is very, very significant in relationship with this statement of, of the Gopi Geet, that Indira Sasvadatrahi, that Lakshmi Devi is always residing in Braj. So Lakshmi Devi once had said she went to Vrindavan and she wanted to enter the Ras Lila because she'd heard that, uh, that Gopishwar Mahadev, he was able to enter the Ras Lila. And some say by the mercy of Lalita, some say by the mercy of Brenda Devi, that he took bath in Mansarova and then he got the body of a Gopi. So Lakshmi Devi was thinking like that. But Lakshmi Devi, she couldn't enter Vrindavan. She only got as far as the other side of the Jamuna and Bilvavan. And there she's doing so many different austerities. And the other side of the Jamuna is a Rasastali. But Lakshmi Devi, she can't enter into that thing. So she's been there for a long, long time. In, in the 16th chapter of the 10th canto, the wives of Kaliya, they describe that Lakshmi Devi, she's been doing austerities in that place huh, for a long, long time. Yet Vanchaya, she has this desire by which Sri Lakshmi Devi, she's been doing this tapa, this austerity, for, for centuries and centuries. So it's been a long, long time that that deity's been there. So she's there, she's praying. That's why she has this, this particular, uh, she's not doing a Gana Mudra, she's not doing some, giving some benediction or something, but she's doing this Anjali Mudra, which means that, please, she's begging like that. Because Lakshmi Devi, although she's the goddess of fortune, she's become bereft now. She's become bankrupt. Therefore, Mahaprabhu in Madhuli, the chapter 8, he asked Ramana and the Roy, Sampatira Madhya Jivira Kon Sampati Gani. That of all the different uh, Sampatis, all the different wealthy people, who is the topmost of those? And Ramana and the Roy replies that Radha Krishna, Prema Jhanra, She Bharadhani. Huh? That that person who has prema, who has love for Radha and Krishna, that person, he's the, the say Bhododhani, he's the, the, the wealthiest person. So the Lakshmi Devi is the goddess of fortune in Braj, she's become bankrupt and she's become a bhikari, she's become a beggar, begging from the bridge bosses. And every year, December, January, the first four Thursdays of that Posha Mas, all the bridge bosses, they have a festival to worship Lakshmi Devi, but 
they're not exactly worshiping her like they do in other places in India. They all go to Bilvavan to give their Ashirbad, to give their blessings to Lakshmi Devi. And so many people go, it's like a big festival, the vendors are there selling little food and trinkets and things. And that festival has been going on as long as the Brijbasis can remember. And every Thursday, a different Goswami temple of Vrindavan takes the responsibility for worshiping Lakshmi Devi. And they go there and they cook huge quantities of kitchi for Lakshmi Devi. Why do they make kitchi? This is Lakshmi Devi. They make kitchi because she's doing austerities. And when you, you're doing austerities, you, you, you take kitchi. So one Thursday, the, the, the Goswamis from Madan Mohan go. Another Thursday, Radha Raman Goswamis go. And this way, they, they make this kitchi prasadam and they distribute it to everyone. Now, generally, it, 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 the Lakshmi Devi is eating opulent things. But when she goes to Bilvavan, she's doing his austerities, so they're giving her kitchi. Meanwhile, in Vrindavan, the gopis, they're eating all kinds of very opulent rebri, kachoris, rasgulas, sandesh, all kinds of nice things. But on the other side, Lakshmi Devi, she's eating his kitchi. So this is another way to see that in Vrindavan uh, is the most opulent place. A as Ramananda Ray says, Radha Krishna Prema Janeshe Bodhadhani, that someone who has love for Radha Krishna, that person is the wealthiest person. So the bridge bhasis, they're coming to give their ashirbad to Lakshmi Devi. They're not coming to, to pray to Lakshmi Devi, that please, Dhanam Dehi, Rupam Dehi, give me some wealth, give me a nice wife, give me this or that. But they're coming to give their, their ashirbad, their blessing. We, we wish you well. <laughs> Someday may you be successful, may you actually enter into the Ras Lila. That's Lakshmi Devi and Braj. And this is another significant point of this phrase, that Indira Sasvat Atrahi, that Lakshmi Devi, she's there in Braj. But how is she there? Amazing. <laughs> so this is... Uh... You know, the, the, the way Lakshmi Devi is uh, depicted, you know, that, that image, that deity we have seen, but I don't know this particular, that is the mood of uh, Lakshmi Devi. Amazing. There is that conversation between, is it Venkat Bhatt and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in South India where there is a philosophical discussion with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, <laughs> but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also keeps the mood light. So he says, <laughs> you know, first he says that, you know, yeah, why did she leave Vishnu and go to Krishna? And he says that they are the same person. So what is wrong? It's not being unchaste. But then if he then he says, then if she went, then why did she why was he not allowed over there? Why was she not allowed over there? And then he says, all this is above my head. And then Lord Chaitanya says, you know, this is we are just having some friendly discussions. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. So Amarindra Pu, you know, this we would love to continue, but I know it's very late for you also. So we'll try to keep a cap of about two hours for our talks. And we'll see if we have to take for more for each verse, also we can take if required. But are there any anything that is waiting to explode from your heart on the first verse? <laughs> Only anarthas come out of my heart. <laughs> no, you and I we hear at least I feel uh when I hear you speak, I feel that everything that I have studied in my scriptural journey is anartha, it's worthless, you know. I haven't studied anything at all in Krishna Lila mm -hmm. and Krishna Tattva also. If you Just can please. kindly give me the um the possibility to screen share Prabhuji. Yes, it's a very beautiful verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam that I would like to. Yeah, I think I have. Go ahead. Tasmanandatma jo yamte narayana samo gunai shriya kirtyanu bhavena gopayasva samahita So this is spoken by Gargacharya at the appearance of Krishna. I was thinking of this verse as a proof just to again bolster this point that Krishna did appear in Braja. Because Gargacharya is coming from Mathura. Mm. And he's saying, Tasman, Nanda Atmaja Ayam. Mm. This Ayam, this boy is who? Nanda Atmaja. He's the son of Nanda Maharaj. <laughs> it's more mm. chance, it's possibility that Gargacharya could have said that he's actually from Mathura. He's from the same place that 
we all belong from. But he doesn't say that. In Sanskrit, the word Atma ja, Atma means soul. And Ja means Janma. So the son in English is called son, S-O-N. He's the first child, second son, third son, fourth son. He's always the son. But in Sanskrit, you could call him Putra, Sutaha, Sunuhu, Atmajaha, Tanayaha. So many words and they all mean different things. So the word Atmaja is that child who is so dear to the parent. Other children are appearing from the body, but this child is appearing from the soul. So Tasmad, therefore, O Nanda, this child, Atmaja, is your Atmaja, Nanda Atmaja. And where is Nanda? He's in Braja. So Jayati te adhikam janmana vrajaha, vrajaha adhikam jayati tava janmana. By your appearance of Krishna, Vrindavan has become more glorious. Again, it's coming from the lips of Gargacharya. Now who can refute that? <laughs> and then he says, Narayana Samogunaihi. This child, um, he almost equals Narayana as far as his qualities are concerned. What qualities? Shriya, opulence, and Kirtya, uh, fame, Anubhavena, through this uh, perspective of opulence and fame, he almost equals Narayana. And therefore, Gopa Yasva Samahitaha. Please raise the child with a lot of care. Now, as we know, Srimad Bhagavatam um, is like Krishna. There's definitely more than what we can actually see. <laughs> so, Gargacharya says that uh, this is the son of Nanda Maharaj and he almost equals Narayana. And as far as opulence and as far as fame is concerned, he is unparalleled and therefore he must be taken care. So, that's the general meaning. But then there is a hidden meaning here. Gargacharya is saying something very beautiful, even more beautiful than the previous statement. He says, Tasmat Nanda Atma Joyamte, this child of Nanda Maharaj. Oh Nanda, this child of yours is so great. Narayana Samogunaihi, which means Narayana is trying to equal him in qualities. <laughs> Instead of saying Krishna is almost equaling Narayana. He says, Narayana is almost equal in Krishna because Krishna has 64 qualities and Narayana has 60. But Krishna doesn't come alone. Who does he come with? He comes with Radharani, Shriya. The hidden name Shri has been used here for Radha. He appears with Radha. But where does Radha come from? Kirtya, from Kirtida Devi. <laughs> Through the womb. <laughs> from the womb of Kirtida Devi, Shri has also appeared. Radha has also appeared. So, O Nanda Maharaj, your son has appeared here and from Kirti Dadev, it makes perfect sense. So, the, the boy's father and the girl's mother have been invoked in this invocation. So, Krishna is the boy and his father Nanda and the girl is Radha and her mother Kirti Dha, Both have been invoked to say that Krishna, the son of Nanda and Radha, Shri is another name for Radha Rani. The daughter of Kirtida Devi, both have appeared, and therefore, O Nanda Maharaj, please take care of your son. Very soon he may leave you and spend more time with her. So please stay, raise your child very carefully. <laughs> Give him a lot of affection because um, he's going to be, uh, there's going to be a tug of war between both you and uh, Mother Yashoda trying to keep him at home, and Radha and her Saki is trying to pull him to the forests of Braja. So therefore, a very wonderful prediction here, just like in the first verse of Gopigi, the first line says about Krishna's appearance and the second line, Indira, can refer to Radharani. So similarly here, there's reference to Krishna's appearance in Vraja as son of Nanda and there's also mention of hidden meaning of Radha's appearance through Kirtida's womb and therefore Gopayasva Samahita, you know, raise this child very carefully. <laughs> so in this way, this... Um, this makes this point. And also in the first verse of Gopi Geet, um, we say, we see Daita Drishyatam Dikshutavakas Tvaidritasavas Tvam Vichinvate that Krishna, please appear. And why appear? It's, it's very interesting. One meaning could be, please appear because we want to see you. But there's a hidden meaning, another hidden meaning that the friends of Krishna, when they find that Krishna is hungry. Krishna is hungry in the middle of his play, but he wouldn't say that because he's so busy playing. So they say, we are hungry. You feed us. 
they realize that Krishna is actually hungry, but he's not going to say it in the in the mood, in the in the in the enjoyment of the rasa that he's enjoying. So the friends say we are hungry because if they say we are hungry, Krishna can refute that. So the gopis are saying, please appear. So if the so we, the, the the understanding could be if the friends can think so much about Krishna, and force Krishna saying that we are hungry, so you come and feed us. That's actually, we want to feed you. So how much more will the gopis have that possessive mood that instead of saying, we want to see you, the actual hidden meaning is, we want you to see us. Why? Because your eyes are beautiful, but they haven't still seen the most beautiful thing in this world, that is us. So don't hide. Come and see us. But instead of saying that, they say, please, we want to see you. So then Krishna will be pulled by that mood of the gopis. And in their call also, instead of saying that we want to see you, the hidden intention is we want you to see us. And especially we want you to see Radha. And then we want to see you fall at her feet. <laughs> and then we will say Jai Shri Radhe. <laughs> we will proclaim the victory of Radha. Ananga Ranga Mangala Prasanga Bhangura Bhruvam Savi Brahmam Sasam Brahmam Driganta Bana Patanai Nirantaram Vashi Krita Pratita Nanda Nandane Kadakarishya Sihamam Kripakataksha Bhajanam. Uh, Lord Shiva is saying that when Krishna comes face to face with Srimati Radharani, he can't even stand because Radharani moves her eyebrows, which is the actual bow. And through that, she shoots the arrow of her glance, sidelong glance. The arrow of her sidelong glance kept on the movement of her long, beautiful eyebrows. And then that goes and hits the heart of Krishna. And Krishna faints. So then the gopis want to see the most beautiful form of Krishna. When is he most beautiful? He's beautiful when he's with gopis. But then he's most beautiful when he's with Radharani. And he's even more beautiful when he is completely conquered by the affectionate um, controllership, the loving controllership of Srimati Radharani as the Swad Swadhina Bhartrika Naika. So then the gopis are saying, they can say all this. So they are saying that we want to see you, please come. But actually we want to, uh, we want to give you a chance to see us and especially Srimati Radhika. So in this way, Daita Drishyatam Dikshutavakas. Also to mean that we are all like lotus flowers and your eyes are the sun and the moon. Okay. So you are the cosmic crea creation and your eyes are the sun and the moon and we are all like lotus flowers and we all know that the lotus flower blossoms only when the sun or the moon gives it sunlight or moonshade or moonbeams. So when you glance on us, that's when we completely blossom. But now that you have gone away, we have completely closed. We have wilted. We have melted. We have withered. So Krishna, you please come out and save yourself from social defamation because you will be the cause of the death of so many gopis. Because we will die in the fire of your separation. And where will all that sin come? It will come to you. So we don't want that social deformation in your life. So therefore, please come so that the sun rays and the moonbeams of your glance can fall on the lotus of our hearts and the lotus of our lives. And it can blossom instead of getting wilted. And that, that sin of social deformation of killing so many gopis shouldn't come on you. So we want to save you. So in this way, so many hidden moods um, are are there in this verse. So these are some thoughts. Can I add a little comment? Please, please. Uh, Fakir Mohan Prabhu shared with us a wonderful book called Mathura Vijay, very famous book in Oriya by Bhakta Kavi Gopal Krishna. And he speaks there about the mood of the gopis when a Krura is taking Krishna away. And the gopis, they're addressing Krishna that we've heard from Gargamuni that previously you were Ramachandra. And we see that you're just like Ram, because Ram left Ayodhya. He went with, with uh, the, the chariot driver mantra, and he took Lakshman with him. So in the same way now, you're living with Akura and Balaram, but Ram is better, because Ram took Sita with him. And that way, the gopis are indicating that you should have taken Radharani with you. And then the gopis, they go on, and they say, we heard that as Ram, you were so... Uh, uh, he had no sense of, of, of any shame. You're shameless that behind a tree, you killed Bali, 
the brother of, of Sugriv, from, from behind a tree. But in Ram Leela, you only killed one Bali. But now if you leave Vrindavan, you're going to kill thousands of Balis because wow. Bali is the name of Sugriv's brother, but Bali also means a young girl. So you're going to kill all of us. A similar thing, which is being made here, wow. point in the Gopi Gate. So beautiful. That's a beautiful, actually, in one sense, setup also for our next verse, because that talks about killing. You know, how can you kill us? Uh, Nignata, right? you know, how can you kill us? So uh, look forward eagerly for the next session. Chaitanya Chan Prabhu, would you yes. like to read? There's a, there's a very sweet. A uh, comment from Gorni Tai Prabhu. I know Gorni Tai from Hungary. He's a senior devotee there. And he wrote a very nice kind of poetic thought, a reflection of the talk today. Would you like to read that? Sure, sure. I'll do that. Reflect back on it. Mm-hmm. So, shopping in a big shopping center or a small store, as now village is very different. When you go to a when you go to a big shopping center, uh, because very difficult for you to find out what is where, so many different variations, new companies, and the place is big, and then we become tired and confused till we find what, what all we need. But when you go to the village shop, <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful example. Eh? <laughs> and the owner is also your friend whom you know very well and offering the best of what we need. Others in the shop are also friends and they offer us what they have experienced the best. And then we also have a nice conversation with them about the values of those things. The mood is very sweet and you feel enlightened after shopping, not tired. <laughs> <laughs> that was his reflection on the discussion <laughs> with the Lord is here today. <laughs> So what is the, like a big supermarket is just directly reading the Shastra over here or just going to he- uh, hearing general classes? Yeah, I, I, Shilo Bhakti Siddhanta in one article, he says that, that we don't want to do platform preaching. When you do platform preaching, you can't give very much. You can't really nourish someone because you have to, it's like Kitchi, you can only give something very, very general. But when you, you can nourish someone in an intimate way, there's some friendship there. So Gorni Thai Prabhu was saying that, that going to a big shopping center, it's impersonal, it's very exhausting. You don't know where to get everything. You have to look everywhere. Okay. But when you go to, to, to a small village, you know the shop owner. He knows you. He knows what you want. Mm. And then you have some friends there, and then it's very sweet. You talk, and you feel inspired when you walk away. You don't feel tired. <laughs> Beautiful. I think we also discussed earlier about our... The three qualifications of association are Snigdha, that what are those three things in the first canto? Sadhu Sangha Satovari, Bhakti Rashmi Yeah. Sajatya. 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 Yeah. Should be in the same family. Yeah. So first. And then Ashaya. Ashaya Snigdha, the person should have affection for us in the heart. So first of all, they must be like minded. Second, they must be affectionate. And third, Swatovare, they must be superior to us spiritually. So that holds true only for me in this assembly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think your insertions of, hum- the insertions of humility are creating a rasavas here now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll cause so much distress in our hearts, Amarendra, if you speak like that. You don't, you don't want to cause pain to us, do you? Why are you speaking like this? You're going to kill us. <laughs> that's like a that's like a gopi heat inside a gopi <laughs> so you know it's like taking these three points the metaphor which Gaudi Tabru has given that it's like you go to a supermarket there are 100 items available but you go to a small village there are separate shops for separate things so that in one sense it is the sajati asha we go to a, this is the like minded association and then we have those who care for us and they are also more experienced than us in one sense that they have studied scriptures and then they have uh, they they have tasted they know and then they can share with us so like somebody who's experienced it the shopkeeper is well wisher shopkeeper also knows what product does what things so that's nice that's why in one sense you can say the living tradition is so important that scriptures are there but it is through the living tradition that the scriptures become accessible for us mm. and 
Let me interject a quick comment. Uh, Bhakti Vigyan Maharaj gives a very, very brilliant uh, description, description about this point. He says that, that Narottam Das Thakur said that we need three things. Uh -huh. We have uh, Sadhu, Shastra, Guru. And he stresses that it goes in this order. First Sadhu, then Shastra, then Guru. The first thing we meet is Sadhu. We meet some person. Yeah. And who is a Sadhu? Sadhu is someone who speaks Shastra. So the sadhu connects us with shastra. And then by that shastra, we get connected with guru. By hearing from the sadhu about shastra, then we understand the qualification of guru. So that shastra is the middle portion of everything. It, that has to always be there. That's also the basis of guru. Amazing. Please, sometimes the way sadhu is presented is like previous acharyas. But then this way you can say sadhu is also referring to shiksha gurus. And they introduce us to the whole... Because almost the universe of bhakti. Mm, because through them we come to know about Shastra, through them we come to know about Guru also. That's remarkable. Even we see in the Chaitanya Leela, um, the poet who comes with his own composition. <laughs> he makes his own compositions with Rasa Bhas and so much Siddhanta and, 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 and Topsy Turvy Siddhanta and Kaviraj Goswami says that um, um, that whenever there is Siddhanta Virod, then Prabhu Kare Krod. Rasa, rasa Bhasa Hoye Jodi Siddhanta Virod, Sahitena Pare Prabhu Mare Kare Krod. <laughs> that when there is mixing of, uh, ra there's Rasa Bhas and opposite Siddhanta presented, then Mahaprabhu feels a lot of, although he's Trunadapi Suni Chena, he's very humble, then the blade of grass, but then he becomes as fiery as a thunderbolt. But then what's the way out? Um, Swarup Dhamma Goswami says, Jao Bhagavata Pado Vaishnava Rasthane Ekanta Ashraya Koro Chaitanya Charane Chaitanya Ro Bhakta Gana Nitya Koro Sanga Tathapi Janiya Siddhanta Samudra Taranga He says that uh, the only way to understand Shastra is Jao Bhagavata Pado Vaishnava Rasthane Go Jao. study Bhagavatam oh. at the lotus feet of Mahabhagavat Vaishnavas and ekanta ashraya koro chaitanya charan. Take shelter of Mahaprabhu. And in this way, chaitanya ro bhakta gana nitya koro sangha. Associate uh, with chaitanya charan Prabhu and Madhavananda Prabhu every day, <laughs> the verse says. And in this way, tabito jani e siddhanta samudra taranga. Then you will be touched by the waves of siddhanta and rasa. Uh, this is the advice given by Swarup Dhamadra Goswami. So that's very good. So I'm a render, Prabhu. You should follow your own advice. And you should come and associate with us every day. And then we'll be very, very happy. And we'll, be, we'll, <laughs> we'll even take the, these, these words which cause a little pain in our heart. We'll, we'll, we'll still accept them by, if we can get the sweet association of yourself. Yeah, you know, wonderful. Thank you for that request. Wonderful. I think this, I've had many, many podcasts with two devotees. But three devotees, it's remarkable. And I would say that both of you bring your quite a, uh, your own distinctive flavor. I am the shop vendor and both of you are the expert cooks. So I'm just uh, fortunate that both of you have come to this shop and the delicacies that you have prepared through in your devoted heart, they are, this is simply a platform for that to be presented. So I am relishing them and we hope that the audience will also be relishing it. So I I also feel maybe another example that uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is like a garden. Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita is like a garden. And all the verses are like flowers. And Srila Prabhupada has opened this garden for us. And all of us, everyone in the room and everyone who's watching, we are all entering this garden taking these flowers, smelling the aroma, and out of gratitude, appreciating the gift of the fragrance that has touched our life through our Guru Parampara. Hmm. That's a good analogy because sometimes the garden may not be meant for us. The garden is meant for the house owner, the garden. You know, in India, everybody's coming and stealing your flowers <laughs> from your garden. The garden is not meant for the outside people, but the fragrance of the flowers, the wind is carrying that fragrance. The, the garden is so kind. So that, that garden may not be meant for us, it's meant for adhikaris, for people who have qualification, like the two of you, to enter into it. 
but we're just standing a little ways away, but we're getting some fragrance of it. And, and all the listeners get some fragrance of it. And that's how merciful Srila Prabhupada is. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a... Well, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that he broke open the treasure of love of God. And then that is like he started sharing the... the is it the jewels or the... It, I think he talks about a flood over there in that particular metaphor. The flood is going everywhere. So we are all trying to relish and share in small ways. It's so interesting at this point, although we are saying that uh, we are all so fortunate, which, which we are, but at the same time, I'm reminded of how Prabodhananda Saraswati in <laughs> Chaitanya Chandramrita, he says, Vishwam Gaura Rase Magnam Sparshopi Mamana Bhavat Vanchitosmi 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 <laughs> But the whole world drowned and is drowning in Gaura Rasa. But alas, alas, I am not touched even by a drop of that flood. I, I have been uh, bereft, devoid, and I have self-cheated myself from this opportunity. And of this, there is no doubt. Uh, so on one end, it is that feeling of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, that Bardha ke e kona, uh, my life has gone waste. And in my old age, now I repent. My Lord, please save me. And Prabodhananda Saraswati says, I have not been touched. But at the same time, there's another extent of um, how has this, how has this treasure come in my life? It must certainly come through Krupa. I did not do any bhajan. I did not do any past credit. It's almost like Hanuman telling Ramachandra in the Bhagavatam. Na janmanunam mahatana saubhagam na vak na buddhi na kriti to shaheto taya visrishthan apinova naukasas chakara sakhe bata lakshmana graja. Hanuman is saying, Na janmanunam, my lord, look at my birth. I am a monkey. Mahatana Saubhagam. Look at my past credit. I have not done any bhajan from past life. Navak. I am not a good orator. Na buddhi. I don't have intelligence. Na buddhi matam varishtam. The most intelligent person is saying I have no intelligence. Navak na buddhi. Na akriti tosha heto. I don't even have a beautiful form, bodily feature to give pleasure to your eyes. I don't even have a home. I live in the forest. I don't wear clothes and I eat fruits from the trees. But look at what has happened in my life. Chakara Sakhe Bata Lakshmana Grajaha. Although I'm so unqualified, the brother of Lakshman Ram has put his hand out in friendship to me. I can't believe what has happened in my life. So there's one end of saying that I have been cheated. And on the other hand, to realize that although I didn't deserve, I'm smelling the fragrance of good fortune which has come in my life. So I think um, this inclusion of both these moods, I, I was thinking. That's beautiful, two metaphors. Two. Sometimes uh, I say that in, a, in our spiritual life, if we become too proud, then we can look ahead to how far we have to go. But if we become too discouraged, then we can look behind to see how far we have come. And, and we have come a significant distance if we consider how we were living before we introduced to Bhakti. So in the similar way, at one level, we are grateful that we have got so much, which we didn't have as compared to what was there earlier in our lives. Our lives are so much richer by Bhakti. But then we look at how much, how many more riches are there than we feel vanchito, you know. I've got nothing. I've been here for so long, but still I've got nothing. So it also depends on the, I think the, the frame of mind, which mood to adopt when. And whatever is anukul to our bhakti, we can adopt and move forward. Thank you. These kind of moods too, we'll hear more in the next verse, how this, this feeling of despondency, of hopelessness, they just wanting to commit suicide. This is a very integral part of bhajan. People throughout the history, they, they have a fascination with suicide in a philosophical, mm -hmm. existential kind of way. And that comes from the gopis, that comes from Radharani, when, when we're so hopeless. And if we're Sanatana Goswami, he gives a beautiful verse, na prema shavanadi bhakti rapi vayogo tava vaishnavo. He says, I, I, na prema, he says, I, I have no prema, 
then you may say, well, at least you're doing sadhana. No, Shavana Adi, I'm not, I'm not doing any sadhana either. Well, you're practicing some bhakti. No, I have no bhakti either. Huh? I, well, you're, you're doing some austerities. No, I'm not doing any austerities. I'm not a yogi. I'm not a Vaishnava. Ganam, I have no knowledge. Ganam va, shubha karma, I have no pious activities that I'm doing. Hmm? Kiyada, not even kid, not even a little tiny bit do I have any of that. But still, huh? Huh? Hey, Gopi Janavalabha Vyatayate Haha Madhishaiva Mama, I have this asha, this hope, huh? because I know that you're very, very merciful on the, on the most fallen person. And that's my only qualification. My grandma used to sometimes say, your only qualification is your disqualification. So what a beautiful contrast he's presenting in this verse. Because he says, hey, Gopi Janavalabha. He's addressing Krishna, who's Gopi Janavalabha, who's the Lord of the Gopis. He's Gopinath. But at the same time, who am I? I'm nothing. I don't have anything. And so in that intense contrast, there, it, it, it breeds a very intense kind of, of bhajan. And this is what we, we hear from the gopis here in the next verse. Mm, yeah, I look forward to that. It's a lot of intense emotion there. So, Anandar, do you want to add something or should we should I try to summarize? I know you'll have a lot to add. But <laughs> we, are, we are very happy to we are very happy to hear the summary. Please, please go ahead. Uh, in one sense, I think many of us will not be happy that summary time has come. We could have gone on, but we'll continue next time. So, I think today we started with Anand. We started with talking about how the same verse can be read as by the the by Chandravali's group of gopis, the right hand right wing gopis and the left wing gopis, and then we discussed about those two moods of devotion that uh, the mood of uh, ghee and the mood of uh, nectar or honey and a beautiful explication of what these two mean that when a honey melts honey is heated it becomes thicker so radharani especially in separation from krishna she becomes um, her love thickens and she becomes that manalila comes in that, that 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 mood was there that was beautiful way we started i think Three, four main, main themes, the so elaborate discussion of those two moods, which we also talk later about how Radharani is, is Rukmini, is, sorry, is, Chandra, is Satya Bhama and, and, and Rukmini is actually Chandravali in the Dwarka Lila. Then also we discussed about Lakshmi Devi's position and we showed the picture of the deity and how Lakshmi Devi is actually present and she is calling. <laughs> And she's in one sense begging for Krishna, begging to be allowed entry into Krishna Leela. And that's why her mood is different and the whole dynamic with respect to that. Another point was, of course, Janmana Vraja. So that how Krishna actually appears in both places. And in one sense, Chakravarti passage, Krishna appears only in Rindavan because says, my tongue is not like a snake. I'll, I'm not like a snake, or my tongue is not like a snake. And then we explain how the whole pastime happens, Madan through that, where how it goes, describing Gopal Champu, how exactly it happens. And then towards the end, we I uh, one of the points we discuss also how there's the private and the public aspect of the Ras of the Rasdila and the Gopi Gita that bhajan is something which is not to be publicized, but when the, the heart is filled with uh, with gratitude, with love, with ecstasy, then naturally there's outpouring. The belching, preaching is the belching of the heart. <laughs> <laughs> and in some ways, just as the, the private, uh, at the appropriate time in a crisis, the private becomes manifested appropriately. Like, uh, like Prabhupada did not talk about Krishna being born in Vrindavan in Krishna book, but he does mention that in his Bhagavatam, uh, in his 10th canto. So then towards the end, we discussed about this mood of separate, uh, that that feeling that there is so much nectar at one level available and I'm so grateful. I quoted the Hanuman prayer and at the same time, the Prabhupada answer Swati prayer, isn't it? That I, I'm deprived, that I have lost everything. So especially that mood that we have, I'm, I'm bereft, that is the mood which will come in the next verse that the gopis will talk about, you know, Krishna, you are killing us by separation from you. And uh, 
So of course, there are many other points, but I think these are the broad four things we discussed. Any major things which you, you want to, I left out, you want to add? Is it a few, Madhavan Prabhu or Varendra Prabhu? I think it was perfect for me. Uh, Thank you. Really so. I'm just afraid I talk too much. You oh, both no. have so much to give. No, 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 no. It's, 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 I'm actually feeling that that mood at this point. That's why I've, I'm, I'm kind of becoming like a tortoise pulling my limbs in because I realize that probably I pulled it out too much and maybe I overspoke. So I would say that it's you know, there is a verse in Mukundamala, if you remember that. Sajiva Amruta Varshini Ya Narayana not Vahini, that that tongue which glorifies Lord Narayan is it showers nectar on the earth. It showers nectar on all living beings. So you know, I wish we had more and more time. And you, know, you know, we could have more and more discussion about it and both of us can speak more and more. I'll try to reflect a little bit. Well, one comment about our, our pace of going. This first verse, the commentaries are much longer than some of the later verses. I don't. I think that, that we we can we'll, we'll be able to go. We might be able to do two verses per session coming up. Yes. Thank you, Bro. So look forward to next week once again. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Madhavan Prabhu. Thank you, Marendra Prabhu. Just you, immensely relishable. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Thank you Madhavan Prabhu.